para maisama sa shortlist na ipapadala sa Malacanang. So, uh, mapap mapapasa po ang uh, Judicial and Bar Council. Ha? Ipapasa po yan ng JBC sa Pangulo kay Pangulong Duterte ng at least no, minimum of three no, nominees. Mamaya kapag meron na po silang uh, finalist ha? sa Presidente at ang Pangulong Duterte po siya ang uh, mamimili. No? Kasi siya po ang Pangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas po ngayon, uh, Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte at mag-appoint po ng panibagong Chief Justice, Attorney Vidal. Ang mga kabilang sa mga susunod para sa magiging uh, uh, punong mahistrado ay sina Associate Justice Lucas Bersamin, Associate Justice uh, Teresita De Castro, Associate Justice Justado Perarta, Associate Justice Andres Reyes Jr. at si Judge Berhinya Tejano Ang. Okay, so uh, yung mga profile ng uh, first nominee natin, uh, Justice Lucas uh, Bersamin. Uh -huh. si, uh, si, ja si Justice Lucas Bersamin, alam mo ba yan? Mm -hmm. ano, mm -hmm. Dati ang uh, uh, pra private practitioner mm -hmm. and at the same time naging ano siya? Uh, naging... Uh, Associate Justice, no? Uh, uh -oh. Si Lucas uh, Bersamin. Nagsimula bilang... Uh -huh. Abogado, siyempre. Private lawyer. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. And then, naging uh -huh. uh, uh, judge siya sa Quezon City. Mm -hmm. Tatumpong taon siya sa serbisyo publiko Nagsimula siyang maglingkod bilang presiding judge ng Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 96 noong 1986. At uh, si Justice Bersamin po ay nagsilbi naman bilang Associate Justice ng Court of Appeals noong 2003 hanggang sa maging Supreme Court Associate Justice noong 2009. Anip na po tuwalong taong gulang si Associate Justice Bersamin at kung mahirang siyang bagong Chief Justice, magre-retire siya sa October next year at, at I would like to ask, bar hmm. top notcher to, number 9 sa 1973 bar exam. Ayan ha, so hindi naman qualified dyan na talagang dapat eh, bar top notcher ka Oo, para maging nominado, hindi, hindi naman, hindi Attorney Vidal? Hindi naman, pero oh. nagkataon na isa, siya ay isang bar top notcher. Okay, so <laughs> dapat bang maging judge ka rin ng mga lower courts bago ka maging nominado dyan na ah, hindi, hindi naman. naman? Hindi naman, dapat lang at least 15 years in the service hmm. of your profession hmm, hmm. at minimum ng 40 years old. Inaantay ko na lang po pangalan ninyo sa susunod na mga taon, <laughs> Attorney Vidal. Masar Masarap po sa private. Masarap, Ilan taong ka na sa private uh, practice? Matagal, at 32 years na ako Apoy, sa private, na. private practice at <laughs> nag-i-enjoy ako. Dati rin ako, yung isang nominado, hmm. kasama ko yan sa prosecutor's office, si Justice Diosdado Peralta. Ah, si Justice Peralta. Dati kasama ko sa Manila prosecutor's office. Bas hmm. I went out of the government eh. Hmm. Kasi alam mo na, mas maganda sa private practice. Hmm. So, uh, oh. May, may, may ano ba qualification sa edad na uh, Tony Vidal? Meron, at least 40 years old at kailangan Filipino citizen. Okay, yan ay ang pagiging uh, Chief Justice, no? Uh -huh. Kasi hindi lang Chief Justice ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, ha? Ang pagiging Chief Justice na dumadaan po ng proseso dyan sa Judicial and Bar Council. Ang pagiging uh, uh, Associate Justices dyan ng Court of Appeals, hindi po ba? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. At pagiging uh, judge din ng mga lower courts katulad ng Regional Trial Court and uh, Metropolitan Trial Court. Hindi po ba, Tony Vidal? Oo, ang pinaka-importante should process proven competence, mm. integrity, probity, and independence. Okay, Ayan. so yung appointments po sa judiciary, uh, at least natural-born Filipino citizen. Yes. Pag Filipino citizen, eh masyado pang dapat nating explain yan. Ha? Mm -hmm. eh, ibig sabihin nun talagang dito yung pinanganak sa Pilipinas, nanay-tatay niya ay Pilipino. Yes, natural born at hindi na kailangan gumawa ng proseso upang maging Pilipino. Oo. Oh, oh. Katulad nung naturalization ay hindi pwede. Hindi, na halimbawa, eh, dual citizen. Um, medyo kung dual citizen, Apo. at least pinanganak ka dito and then kumuha ka ng American citizen, bumalik ka dito, nirenounce mo yung pwede ano, na. pwede siguro. Oo, oh, pwede yan. Pero wag yung gumawa ka ng paraan para ikaw mag-naturalize bilang Amerikano. Halimbawa lang ha. Anyway, uh, mga kaibigan, ang susunod na mangharap sa Judicial and Bar Council si Associate Justice Teresita de Castro. Apat na po't limang tao dang naglilingkod sa pamalaan si Associate Justice De Castro. Nagbula po siya bilang clerk sa Supreme Court noong 1973. Oh, State Counsel sa Department of Justice noong 1978. Assistant Chief State Counsel noong 1997. Associate Justice ng Sandigan Bayan, 
at presiding judge ng Anti-Graf Court 2004. Attorney Vidal. Na-appoint siya bilang Associate Justice ng Supreme Court noong 2007. Kung siya ang maging susunod na Chief Justice, magre-retire na siya sa Oktobre ngayong taong ito. Mm -hmm. At uh, siya yung ngay uh, pinakamataas ngayon. Susunod kay Justice Carpio. Mm -hmm. Eh, nag, uh, di ba, ayaw ni Justice Carpio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ulitin nag lang po natin ha, ang mga qualifications ng uh, pagiging Chief Justice or Associate Justice ng uh, Korte Suprema at least 40 years old. 40 yeah. years old, no? And above. And above. Uh, and above, ha? A natural born citizen. 15 years? Tama ba, Tony Vidal? Or, oh, more, or more as a judge? Of Dapat a naging huwes ka. Judge oh. of a lower court. Or, Ibig sabihin ng lower court, Art, RTC, Court, MTC, Court of MTC, Appeals. Court of Appeals, yes. MTC, di yeah. ba? Or, at, opo. At uh, nag-engage sila ng practice of law in the Philippines for the same period. 15 yeah. years. Yes, nyo, 15 years. At least 15 years. Okay. Eh, marami nga dyan na talagang uh, uh, kwalipikado. Opo. Ngunit uh, dahil siyempre, ang presidente mag a -appoint. Natatakot din mag-apply dahil baka naman wala silang connection. Mm. Hindi rin naman sila ma-appoint. Mm -hmm. So, diba? person of proven competence. When we speak of competence, integrity, probity, and independence. independence. Ibig sabihin yeah. nun, walang kinikilingan. Dapat. Oo. Oo. At Oo. may alam sa batas, siyempre. Of course, <laughs> kasi kung, kung uh, Supreme Court Justice, napakahirap na mga, ba, mga kasong uh, didesisyonan, lalo mm -hmm. na Chief Justice. Ma pinaka, alam mo, pangarap ng lahat ng abogado yan, maging Chief Justice. Maging Chief Justice, no? Oo. Probity and independence, no? Ang kanyang, kasi, unbank yan, resolution, ibig sabihin nun, collegial body. No? Oo. 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 So, yung mga may estado niyan, depende din, no? meron po silang botohan din dyan. Anyway, uh, mamaya, uh, pag-usapan din natin yan at Tony Vidal. No? Ang ikatlong sasalang po sa public interviews, Associate Justice Diosdado Peralta. Tatlong dekada na po siyang public servant. Simula nang maglingkod bilang third assistant city fiscal sa Lawag, Ilocos Norte, 1978. Nagsilbi rin siyang bilang prosecutor sa Maynila, 1988 at naging assistant chief ng investigation division ng Manila City Prosecutor's Office. Noong 1994, napoint po siya bilang judge ng Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 95. Napoint po siya bilang associate justice ng Sandigan Bayan noong 2002, kung saan siya naging presiding judge noong 2008. Nang susunod ng uh, sumunod na taon, napoint na siya bilang associate justice sa Korte Suprema. Attorney Vidal. Sa apat na Associate Justice na haharap sa Judicial and Bar Council, si Associate Justice Peralta ang may pinakamahabang termino kung sakaling mapili bilang Justice. Dahil sa March 2022 20, pa siya magre-retire dahil mm. anit, anim, na put, anim na taong gulang pa lamang siya. Pinakabata pala siya no, sa mga aplikante. Mm -hmm. ay, ay, sa ngayon, Sa ngayon, kaya lang meron pa si at, at, ano, Justice Andre Reyes, mas bata sa kanya yun. Mas bata, no? Lalo mm -hmm. na yung uh, si Judge Tejano Ang. Mm -hmm. Yung isa sa mga aplikante ay uh, ma bata pa din. Speaking of probity, no? Probity, anong ibig sabihin in uh, layman's term, uh, Tony Vidal? Parang ang probity ay uh, yung uh, pwede kang pagkatiwalaan. Mapagkakatiwalaan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Walang Mapag bahid na walang kung anong mang katiwalian? Walang mang katiwalian, wala kang kaso. Isa yan sa upang matanggal ka sa bilang nominado kung ikaw ay na-convict at ikaw ay may kaso administratibo. Sa malinis Cortis, ang record mo. Dapat malinis ang record. Okay. Okay, so uh, mga kaibigan, ang uh, susunod, no? Na haharap po sa uh, Judicial and Bar Council, Siya po ay si Associate Justice Andres Reyes Jr. Nagsilbi siya bilang judge sa Metropolitan Trial Court sa Makati noong 1987 at sa Metropolitan Trial Court sa San Mateo Rizal noong 1990. Napoint siya bilang Associate Justice sa Court of Appeals noong 1999 at naging presiding judge o justice uh, doon noong 2010. Napoint naman siya bilang Associate Justice ng Korte Suprema nung nakarang taon pero na-nominate siya noong 2014 at 2016. Attorney Vidal. Ang nagmula sa pamilya ng mga mahistrado, si Associate Justice Reyes 
ang kanyang lolo ay dating Supreme Court Justice Alex Reyes, hmm. samantalang ang kanyang ama ay nagsilbi rin bilang Justice ng Court of Appeals. Kung sakaling mahirang bilang susunod na Chief Justice, nakatakda siyang mag sa taong 2020. Okay. Yan po si uh, Justice uh, Reyes. No? Okay. So, uh, again, a person of proven competence, integrity, probity, and independence. No? Yun yun. Ha? Kasi nga, uh, alam naman natin, uh, isa sa mga pinaka- Uh, makapangyarihang uh, opisyal ang pamalaan ng pagiging Chief Justice. Higa nga, no? Presidente, Vice Presidente, Presidente Chief Justice. Chief, uh, Senate, ah, Senate President. Senate President. Chief Justice. Senate President, Speaker of the House, hindi po ba? Yes, oh, then, okay. Chief then Chief Justice. Then Chief Justice. Yan po ang uh, ating pong uh, tandaan na uh, with uh, respect sa equal power po, equal branch no? ng ating pong uh, uh, gobyerno ang judiciary, executive and the legislative. Eh sana po eh talagang mahirap talagang uh, uh, mamili dahil kita mo dalawang magkakasunod na chief justice ay na, na, nawala sa pwesto. Mm -hmm. 'Di ba? Balikan ko lang yung kay yung kaso ni Okay lang no. Babalikan ko lang yung kaso ni Attorney Lourdes Sereno. Oo. Kasi from the very beginning void po kanyang appointment. Yun hindi ang, po ba kasi Yun oo, oh, yun ang decision. Kuwaran to yun eh. Kuwaran to. So hindi siya naging chief justice talaga. Parang gano'n ang lumabas. <laughs> hindi, parang prospective naman ang decision ng korte. Eh. Uh -huh. Hindi naman magre-retroact. Lahat naman ng decision nagpo-prospective in effect. Okay. So, kauna-unahan yun, di ba? Sa Kaun history. Kasi sayang po ng Pilipinas na napatalsik ang isang uh, Chief Justice sa pamamagitan ng co-warrant to petition. Hindi po ba? Kaya nga, kauna-unahan. Kaya ngayon, talagang ang pagpili nila ay siguraduhin na siguro hindi na maulit na makawaran to. <laughs> Pwede pwedeng gawin 'yon as uh, batayan no jurisprudence na po 'yon no Oo jurisprudence na mag-ingat din sila dahil pwedeng kung Ku merong nakitang kulang sa kanilang application qualifications oo uh, pwede silang sampahan ng petisyon ng co-warrant na nasasad sa ating uh, rules of court Yes mm -hmm. Tama 'yon mm -hmm. Aljo um, ano ba yung basis doon kay Attorney Lourdes Reno? Hindi siya nakapag-file ng Hindi siya nakapag-file ng SALN. Ibig sabihin, <laughs> nag-violate ng law. Hmm. Dahil ang, ang, sal, ang pagpapile ng SALN ay mayroong batas dyan. Hmm. Kapag hindi mo yun na i-submit, nag-violate ka ng batas. Okay. So, uh, mamaya, babalikan natin. Ha? Kasi very interesting din ang kasong co-warrant to, petition oh, oh. ng, papag, ng, ng uh, pagpapatalsik no? bilang uh, chief executive ni Maria Lourdes Reno. Samatala, at huling sasalang naman sa public interviews ay si Judge Virginia Tejano Ang. Siya po ang kasalukuyang hukom. Uy, taga-dabaw. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. Hukom ng Tagum City, Dawa del Norte, Regional Trial Court Branch 1. Mayong nga buntag sa itong mga iksundiyan sa Tagum. Siya po ang nag-issue ng warrant of arrest laban sa suspect sa pagpatay. Sa radio anchor na si Rogelio Tata Butali doong 2014, Attorney Vidal. Sa limang nominado, siya ang pi may pinakamahabang terminos kung sakali ah, ng panunungkulan kung mahirang siya nasusunod na punong mahistrado dahil Anim na put limang taong gulang pa lamang siya. Nakatakda siyang magretiro sa taong 2023 pa. Mm -hmm. Pero mo matagal pa. Tsaka siya lang yung judge, talagang nag uh, nagsikap siya na mag-apply uh, ano. Mm -hmm. Eh ito ay eh, napakahirap ng aplikasyon diyan. Alam mo ba, Aljo, halos 70 documents ang isasubmit. Mm -hmm. Napakarami ng uh, isasubmit mo, lahat ng clearances, police clearance, uh, court clearance, uh, sal-in, tapos yung, 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 yung mga previous employment, mga uh, sample ng decisions mo kung mm, judge ka, mm, mm, mm. sample ng pleadings mo kung practicing lawyer ka, uh, maliban pa doon, meron pang kailangan mo pang kumuha ng napakaraming uh, Uh, clearances kung nagkaroon ka ng dating kaso. Mm -hmm. Oo, dahil kukunin mo pa lahat yon Dahil i-divulge mo eh. Okay, sige. Uh, mamaya, babalikan natin na uh, ang detalye pa nito. Uh, Nitty-gritty part ng uh, pagpili, uh, proseso mga kaibigan. Babalikan mo natin si Pauline Requesto. Nandun po sa Maynila, sa Court Suprema. Pauline, ano nang nangyari dyan? Aljo, uh... 
ng uh, public interview para sa susunod na Chief Justice. Ang balita natin na uh, hinihintay pa yung isang uh, panel member na miyembro ng uh, Judicial and Bar Council. Uh, narinig ko kanina no, yung pag-uusap ninyo, Aljo, ni Attorney Vidal at uh, tama nga, medyo uh, sabi ng uh, JBC, mas uh, mahigpit yung uh, scrutiny na gagawin o pagsala, uh, pagsasalang na gagawin sa mga uh, nominees para nga hindi maulit yung uh, nangyari kay uh, dating uh, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno na uh, nagkamali or nagkulang ng uh, sale nung kanyang uh, pag-apply uh, uh, chief, bilang Chief Justice noong 2012. Uh, Aljo, uh, Attorney Vidal, sa kaalaman, kaalaman lang ng uh, publiko, maari pong uh, mag-tweet yung ating uh, mga manonood sa Twitter account ng JBC bilang uh, bahagi nga ang publiko dito sa mahalagang uh, uh, pangyayari na ito sa judiciary ng uh, pamahalaan o judiciary ng Pilipinas, maaari nyo pong itweet ang inyong mga questions o may, kung may katanungan po kayo sa kung sino mang mga, membro, uh, mga chief justice aspirants ay maaari po kayong mag-tweet sa Twitter account ng Judicial and Bar Council. Mabanggit ko lang din na uh, before itong uh, pagsalang ng, or before itong public interview ng uh, mga chief justice aspirants, nagkaroon ng internal voting ang uh, Supreme Court on Bank. At uh, sa kanilang pagboto ay uh, nakakuha itong si Justice Lucas Bersamin ng pinakamaraming boto. Ten votes ang nakuha niya mula sa kanyang mga kasamahan sa loob ng Korte Suprema. At uh, nakakuha naman ng tig nine votes si uh, Justice uh, De Castro at uh, Justice Peralta. Habang nakakuha naman si uh, Justice uh, Andres Reyes Jr. ng dalawang votes. Ayon kay uh, Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara na ex-official member ng uh, JBC, uh, bagamat uh, persuasive lamang itong or recommendatory, maring recommendatory itong maging uh, boto o itong naging boto ng Unbank sa kanilang mga kasamahan, hindi pa rin ito yung uh, magdidikta sa maaring maging uh, shortlist o yung lalamanin ng shortlist ng Judicial and Bar Council. At uh, yan muna ang ating uh, latest na update mula rito sa Supreme Court. Balik sa inyo dyan sa studio. Okay, uh, baka may mga tanong ka, Attorney Vidal. Hindi, ang, ang tanong ko lang uh, kay Pauline. Pauline, na uh... Ibig, ibig bang sabihin yung nakakuha ng 10 votes ay baka maaring siya ang iboboto ni Acting Chief Justice uh, para sa boto sa Korte Suprema dahil 10 ang nakuhang boto ni Justice Bersamin? Uh, Attorney Vidal, no, posible na ito yung, or ito yung uh, maging boto rin ni uh, Acting Chief Justice uh, Antonio Carpio sa kung sino yung magiging uh, uh, Susunod or yung uh, sa tingin nila na pwedeng maging susunod na Chief Justice ng uh, Korte Suprema. Pero again, yun nga, ang sabi ni uh, uh, Justice uh, Secretary Minardo Guevara, uh, hindi pa rin ito yung final dahil uh, tatlo yung uh, pangalan na isasama sa shortlist ng uh, JBC na ipapasa nila kay Pangulong Duterte para pagpilian. Uh, makakap may mga nakakapasok ba sa loob ng interview room? Uh, halimbawa, yung mga uh, gustong uh, manood dyan sa Sup Korte Suprema, makakapasok ba at makakapanood o may restrictions? Oo, sa sadly attorney Vidal, no, kahit uh, tayo din na uh, nasa media ay uh, hanggang lobby lamang na Pwede nga manood, mayroon lamang uh, feed doon yung uh, PTV4 kung saan uh, maaaring uh, makapanood yung mga kasamahan natin sa media at uh, yung mga nais din na uh, manood ng uh, public interview. At yung uh, medyo mahigpit na nga rin yung seguridad na uh, dito sa Supreme Court compound no, mula pa lamang sa gate, talagang chinecheck na ng uh, mga gwardiya ng uh, ilang uh, miyembro ng PNP at hanggang doon sa pagpasok ng uh, Supreme Court lobby ay uh, isa pa ulit uh, check ang uh, security check ang ginagawa ng uh, mga gwardiya ng Supreme Court. Thank you Pauline, parang may live feed na tayo. Nakikita na natin si Justice ay si Senator Gordon, si Justice Mendoza at uh, si uh, ayan si Senator Gordon naka live feed na tayo Pauline. Uh, siguro ay uh, magsisimula na. Ayan, si Justice Mendoza. Mm -hmm. uh, ayan ang uh, uh, nagre-represent po siya sa retired uh, justice ng uh, Korte Suprema. Mm -hmm. At ang uh, 
si, ano pa Medyo yung... malayo, hindi ko makikita eh. Anyway, uh, y- yung pong uh, JBC is composed of the Chief Justice. No? Ito, Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio as ex-officio chairman. Yung Secretary of Justice, hindi ko pa nakikita si uh, Secretary uh, ah, hin- Debar. Hindi siya kasama magtatanong. Ay, hindi, hindi kasi siya magtatanong. usually ang nagtatanong lang ay apat po iyan. Okay. Ayan. Representative ng Congress, ex-officio members pa rin yan, no? Oo. Representative ng Integrated Bar of the Philippines. So, At, ang Congress, si Senator Gordon. Si Senator Gordon. Kasi Opo. nagahati sila. Minsan Opo. si, ja, si uh, Congressman umali ang umuupo dyan. Kasi mm. ako'y madalas akong manood eh. Mm. Uh, uh, alam mo na, uh, upang malaman ko kung paano sumagot ang mga uh. nag interview At meron ding isang uh, law professor, no? Ayun, uh, law Sino professor. Sino professor dyan? Wala, wala, wala ngayon wala. si mm-hmm. ja, uh, ano eh, si Attorney Mejia eh. Si siya, Attorney Mejia, si Jojo. O, si kilala Jojo, ko yan. Kaibigan ano, natin yan. Ano, nag-end na yung term niya ah, na four years. Nag-end na yung term niya. No? Mm-hmm. Oo, so, ang, retired member ng Court Suprema. Yun, sinabi niyo si oo, Justice, uh, si Justice Mendoza. Mendoza. Okay. And uh, representative mula sa private sector. Si ano, si Judge Ilaw, ang private sector. Okay. Ayun, ay yung mm-hmm. huli. Mm-hmm. Uh, si Judge Ilaw. At of course, yung representative, ang ating kaibigan na si... Attorney Milagros Fernand Cayosa, mm-hmm. representative yan ng Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Thus, the JBC was designed to have seven voting members. Tama ba? Yes, seven. Attorney Vidal? Oo. Apat, uh, pitong boto sila. With three ex-officio members Ayan. equal say in the choice of judicial nominees. Yun, okay. ang ano. Kaya nga, uh, siguro... Kung pito yan, dapat may apat yes, na boto. Yes, apat na boto, majority. Okay. Oo. Mm-hmm. Pero yung ni-raise mo kanina, yung sinabing sampo, ano yun, uh, Tony Vidal? Ilawin hindi, natin. Hindi. Ano, sam, ano talaga, ano sila, talagang pito lang. Pito lang. Pito mm-hmm. lang talaga. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yung mga kaibigan, na, yun ang uh, abangan natin mamaya, yung uh, it's a public interview. Dapat uh, welcome lahat doon, di ba? Hindi po ba, Tony Vidal? Oo no? nga. Yun nga, mm-hmm. I was expecting eh, public interview. Siguro, ang ibig sabihin ng public interview, mapapanood natin sa television at uh, lahat ng uh, sa radyo ay mapapakinggan at sa internet. Mm-hmm. Actually, yung mga iba, uh, just sa YouTube ko napapanood eh. Sa YouTube tsaka sa live stream po. Ay, sa live stream. Naka, naka live stream siguro sa Facebook. Naka live stream tayo dito sa PTV. Ha? Pumunta Oo. lang po kayo sa aming pong website ha? o kaya sa FB page ng uh, PTV. Ha? People's Television Network sa Facebook. Naka live na po tayo. Na-share mo na ba sa Facebook mo rin? Uh, Hindi Johnny pa Vidal? ako nagsishare eh. Na. Wala kasi ako ah. nga, uh, walang internet dito eh. Alam mo na. Mm-hmm. Pag... Na-share ko na rin po sa na-share Birada. Na-share mo na ba sa'yo? Uh, sa Birada Bentiho. Ha? Sa ating po mga followers po dyan, na-share na rin po natin itong uh, special coverage natin sa pagpili ng susunod na Chief Justice. Okay? Uh, mamaya na si Pauline. Pabalikan na natin. Ready na ba si Pauline? Pag nagsimula na yan, magsisimula ah, na yung mag-interview. Anyway, again na ang uh, mga qualifications po ng Chief Justice, Associate Justice ng Court Suprema, at least 40 years old above. Yes. 40 years old above. Okay? Natural born Filipino citizen. 15 years or more bilang West ng lower courts. RTC, MTC, person with competence, integrity, probity, and independence. independence. Okay? Balikan natin si Pauline Requesto. Pauline, kamusta na riyan sa Korte Suprema? Adyo, uh, magsisimula na nakita natin, kumpleto na yung uh, JBC panel na mag interview sa mga Chief Justice Aspirants. At uh, sisimulan na yung uh, public interview anytime soon. Si Cle- uh, Supreme Court Clerk of Court, Attorney Edgar Aricheta, ang uh, ex-officio secretary ng JBC, ang magko-call to order. At uh, unang ang sasalang itong si uh, Justice Lucas Bersamin na susundan ni uh, Justice at Teresita de, Car- de Castro, Justice Josdado Peralta ngayong umaga yan. Ayan na, uh, pakinggan na natin yung uh, nangyayari dyan sa loob ng uh, Division Hearing Room ng Korte Suprema. With your greater glory, Amen. Sa manlulupi, kita pa sisigil sa lalaman. 
Now be seated. Your Honours, the candidates for interview this morning are in the following order. Supreme Court Associate Justice Lucas Bersamin, Supreme Court Associate Justice Teresita J. Leonardo de Castro, and Supreme Court Associate Justice Juslado M. Peralta. May I request Justice De Castro and Justice Peralta to stay in the holding room while the interview for Justice Bersamin is being conducted. I kindly administer the oath, please. Uh, Attorney Arichetta. Yes, sir. Thank you. Candidates, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth in this panel interview by the Judicial and Bar Council. So help you God. Honours, you may now start the interview for Justice Bersamin. 
Thank you, Attorney Arichetta. Uh, the Honorable Justice uh, Jose Mendoza will start the proceedings with the first questions. Ms. Miedema. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I forgot that I'm supposed to be a gentleman rather than a lawyer here. Uh, let me recognize uh, Attorney Mila Cayosa to start the proceedings with the first questions. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Good morning, Justice Bersamin. Good morning, ma'am. You have been in the Supreme Court for more than nine years now. What would you consider as your signature, signature project um, as an associate justice? Um, some have continuous trial and all that, but what would you consider as your signature project? Uh, I cannot claim any uh, project that I did singly or single-handedly because the Supreme Court is a collegial body, essentially, and uh, our participation in rulemaking, aside from uh, our main task of adjudication, I think uh, should stand for my signal achievement in the Supreme Court during that tenure. Thank you, Justice. Now, you are among the, um, if not the longest serving uh, jurists among those who are the position of Chief Justice. Should be, you be nominated and appointed as Chief Justice, you would only, though, have roughly 13 months to serve. What do you plan to do in the 13 months that would make a lasting difference in the Supreme Court? Well, uh, we can do a lot of things in uh, one month, two months, uh, Your Honor. But I think uh, that balance of the time that I would have will be more than sufficient for me to introduce some innovations, firm up uh, existing uh, programs and activities, and enhance the image of the Supreme Court. Uh, if you ask for specifics uh, right off, I will have to uh, advocate the uh, enhancement of the powers of the JBC for uh, selection and vetting of uh, candidates for judgeship positions because uh, I see that uh, the JBC will need a lot more uh, muscle to look into the qualifications of uh, aspirants for judicial positions, especially those who will serve in the provinces and rural areas, because the confidence in, of the people in the judiciary in those areas is uh, simply eroding. Next, I will have to strengthen the FILJA, the Philippine Judicial Academy, as a training arm for uh, incumbent and aspiring uh, judges and justices. The prejudicature program of the FILJA is already in place, but I think that uh, more needs to be done in terms of content. And uh, the training should also be more skills-based rather than knowledge-based. Because uh, the qualifications for uh, judges in the trial courts requires already five years uh, experience or 10 years experience at least in the minimum, in addition to the law education that the candidates have already gone through. Uh, so we need to uh, hone these uh, new or prospective judges with uh, skills-based uh, training. I think uh, we need that more than the knowledge-based uh, approach. Another aspect where I would uh, have an impact as a Chief Justice, if so selected or appointed, is to um, expand the publication of uh, the judicial decisions of the court, because I think even if in these uh, times of electronic uh, technology, uh, many people do not know at all about the actual functioning of the Supreme Court, and uh, this actual functioning may not actually be brought to the conscious, uh, con consciousness of the masses uh, effectively. So we will have to empower the public uh, information office of the Supreme Court and uh, give it uh, more reach than uh, it has now. Another matter that I would like to improve on is the infrastructure of the trial courts. We have been uh, always dealing with this problem year on and uh, uh, every year, 
And uh, every time we face this problem, we have this uh, shortage in funding. And uh, right now, I am aware that the Supreme Court has uh, already earmarked its savings towards the improvement of uh, infrastructure. But this infrastructure is not limited to the physical infrastructure. We would also have this uh, quality infrastructure. And that is taken care of by the first two that I mentioned earlier. And then uh, I also would like to enhance this uh, delivery of justice by addressing all these uh, concerns about inefficient and corrupt judges who have acted dishonorably and uh, rather than enhance the image of the judiciary, have uh, destroyed the image. And uh, this can be done easily by the Supreme Court uh, maybe delegating the discipline of judges as far as minor offenses are concerned to the Court of Appeals for uh, the proper disposition of their cases and the Supreme Court will just uh, uh, approve the uh, discipline that the Court of Appeals meets out. That is one way of giving also more responsibility to the Court of Appeals. Then we will also uh, enhance the uh, capacity of the IBP to discipline the ranks of the lawyer profession. Uh, very fortunately for us in the previous years, in the years that I have served in the court, I have seen, uh, since the time of Chief Justice Pono, I have seen uh, a speeding up of the processing of uh, disciplinary uh, cases involving uh, lawyers. We have uh, sanctioned or disciplined many, many lawyers, more than probably in uh, the recent uh, past, no? before that time. Because the IBP has also uh, done its best to reach out to our plea, to, uh, to respond to our plea for expediting the investigation of uh, uh, administrative cases involving lawyers. Um, although we, have, we are now in the electronic age, there are still many of us in the judiciary who prefer to go over uh, precedents or decisions, jurisprudential developments by looking at the law books. Now, fortunately for us, uh, we have a printing office that, so that the court uh, will no longer depend, does not anymore depend on the Bureau of Printing. We will also improve the capacity of the printing office of the Supreme Court so that uh, more and more uh, uh, books uh, involving our ju jurisprudence will be disseminated among the trial judges. There are areas in the country who do not have the access to such uh, materials, and it is my aim, if I were to be the Chief Justice, to uh, contribute to this. I have many more, Your Honor, but uh, it's not easy for me to recall uh, where else can we have an improvement. Thank you, Justice. Actually, let me just uh, pick some of those that in your essay, uh, some things that would be of interest to us, particularly at the JBC. Well, we start with whom? Um, the JBC uh, processed over 15,000 um, applications last year. And we, even if there is a complement of about 70 personnel, what would you do in order to, you stated that you would enhance the, um, uh, well, the processes. Specifically, since as Chief Justice, you would be chairman of uh, the Judicial and Bar Council. Could you be more specific as wh what is your vision for the uh, JBC and how would you pursue it? I am aware that the JBC has called on uh, agencies of the government who are into investigation to exhaust all the means to look into the backgrounds of our But uh, it seems to be that, uh, it seems to me that uh, somehow there are still uh, people who do not deserve, who have uh, managed to uh, be appointed to these positions. Now, there is no insurance against uh, these kinds of uh, mistakes, 
I do not ascribe that to the uh, JVC. I rather ascribe that to the shortcomings of the pre-vetting uh, uh, process. Uh, the solicitation of uh, reactions from the public to the candidates or aspirants for judicial positions might be lukewarm because the public may not generally know through inadequate publication that uh, this and that fellow is applying, but he is a scalawag in our community. So they react too late. The appointment has already been handed down. And uh, that then is the only time that uh, this uh, man or uh, this person has been uh, appointed. And it is too late. You know? So maybe we could uh, give to the JBC uh, the better, the higher capacity to address this problem. No? Publication, uh, although time is not usually uh, always there, uh, we may expand that kind of uh, uh, publication. We'll get to know, especially in the communities that they intend to serve or the communities that uh, they have lived in. Because those are the people uh, in those communities who would know much about them. Thank you, Justice. It may interest you to know that the JBC entered into a memorandum of agreement with the IBP where we would conduct a Pillars of Justice assessment program uh, to determine uh, the fitness of uh, those who are applying for judicial posts. Um, at the same time, it will be a regular uh, vetting, I mean, a process by which they are evaluated through uh, the assessment program that will be done annually. So we are in close coordination with the IBP since they are familiar with the work of uh, uh, the judges and they would be in a better position to give feedback on them. Yeah, now moving on, with the FILJA, there is a Philippine Mediation Center um, with the FILJA. How much importance will you give to this unit? And um, what is uh, what enhancements will you make uh, to have uh, alternative dispute resolution as a way of uh, well resolving uh, cases and issues before the courts? Yes, uh, Your Honor, thank you for that question. Mediation is a very important uh, form of uh, alternative dispute resolution. I was actually sent to Canada to study the Canadian model. Although there were other models that were uh, available to, for adoption by the court at the time, but uh, it seems that the court at that time was fixated on this Canadian model. But the Canadian model, as far as I'm concerned, is not uh, entirely responsive to Philippine conditions. Because we have a law, it's in the civil code, that actually allows the judge to mediate until the end of the case to try to help the parties settle their dispute. But the Canadian model obviously does not allow that. So in my own uh, humble way, I have been trying to uh, focus attention on this uh, obvious conflict between the adoption of the Canadian model and the civil code. Uh, the law on compromise uh, requires the judge, imposes on the judge to try to settle the case himself. But in the Canadian model, the judge who does that is immediately removed from the case should the effort fail. Now, I would like to has been successful in the Philippines. That's this, what the statistics show. But uh, I don't see any reason why we should not allow the judge to mediate because the judge in the traditional uh, uh, thinking is always uh, the authority where people could have their disputes submitted and resolved. And the participation of the judge in mediation, unless he makes uh, partial or uh, partisan statements or reveals otherwise, uh, he should not be removed from the case. So I think uh, mediation has uh, a promise for us. As we have time limits, but I, let me just allow me uh, to, Mr. Chairman, to uh, just take up two more points. Um, one. The chair will be liberal, okay. but uh, now is your last question. Thank you. Uh, 
second to the last. <laughs> um, Justice uh, Velasco recently retired uh, as an associate uh, justice with a zero backlog docket. Among the aspirants uh, today who will be interviewed, uh, yours has the highest docket. Um, in your personal data sheet, you declare that you have a total of 1,535 cases pending before your office. Would you, could you tell us, with 13 months to go, or say 14 months roughly, uh, as a member of the court, how do you propose to resolve all these pending cases before you, so that you could achieve a zero backlog? Your Honor, I will not be that ambitious. Given the time that I have remaining, and given the uh, very specific uh, problems in the court about uh, adjudication, it's uh, physically impossible for anyone to obliterate a docket as heavy as that. But let me just give you the perspective. When I came into the court, I inherited 1,800. And I've been trying to prune that uh, volume down. You see, the court uh, has this very peculiar rule that uh, whoever uh, you are succeeding, whose vacancy you are succeeding, leaves something, that is what you get. And uh, the, those who are incumbent may even add to that load. Now, I am not complaining because you do not choose the time when you are appointed, when you join the court. But uh, I have been disposing 101 cases, uh, that's the average that I have had uh, in the past uh, few months. And uh, we have incoming, Your Honor, more than that. So on a one-to-one -one ratio, it's impossible for me to raise that docket. But I think by the time I will retire, I shall have uh, already cut that uh, docket by half because as Chief Justice, you would be given only a fourth of the number of cases that uh, the associate justices get. The, that is true also for the chairman and the working chairperson of the first division. That's how the court operates, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice. Now, finally, um, I have here a, a study of uh, your sal and your assets and liabilities over the past 10 years. And um, I would just like to highlight um, some portions in your sal and submitted, particularly for the years 2014 to 2017. Um, there is a remarkable uh, increase of assets from the year 2013 to 2014 uh, by as much as about 5 million. <coughs> and uh, over the years, from 2014 to 2015, by 2 million. From 2015 to 2016, um, 8 million. And from 20, fifth, sorry, from 2016 to 2017, by 3 million. May we just know, I mean, what is, um, you know, the, the cause of the, the increase since we know that uh, the remuneration as an associate justice is a fixed amount. Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for asking uh, that question. Uh, in the Supreme Court, we have a standing uh, rule that you become a member of the electoral tribunals when you are at least uh, number seven. I became number seven, I do not uh, recall anymore when, but uh, when you do get to be a member of the, either the Senate Electoral Tribunal or the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal, you are given uh, an allowance that is very substantial. Although we do not know if that is tax, taxable or not, uh, that, that impacts on our uh, uh, financial standing. Another thing, Your Honor, uh, uh, my wife is a, is a businesswoman, and uh, this uh, SALEN is a joint declaration on our part because she does not work in government. She's in the private sector. There are times when uh, she would have uh, uh, substantial deposits in the bank, but uh, since uh, some years back, 
she already incorporated that business because she was she she is retiring in the private sector upon reaching the age of 65. Uh, the jumps that you had noticed, Your Honor, probably were uh, to reflect because uh, I think it was in my 2014. Uh, where there was a jump caused by the report on the cash deposits. And then at another time, I don't know the year now, I cannot uh, look. Uh, the, we, I, I finally had to reflect in my cell and the acquisition uh, that we made by installment of a condominium unit in the Avida project in uh, the Sol Soltis, Soltis project, Your Honor. I think that was in 2015. Uh, my wife uh, is the one who makes these decisions to buy property as an investment for us, Your Honor. And I cannot stop her from doing that. Now, I report all my income. In 2008, I was uh, an examiner in the bar. And in last year, I was the chairman of the bar examination. So, I will, in the end of, at the end of this year, probably report another jump because you do get a substantial uh, compensation for uh, that uh, job, Your Honor. Okay. May we know uh, what type of business your, your uh, wife has been into? Is yes. she still uh, yes, active? Yes, she is. She is, Your Honor. Since 1994, my wife uh, has owned their, her business, and she engages in uh, sales and importation of uh, movie-making equipments high-end movie-making equipments. And uh, as the technology changes, you would often uh, adapt uh, new products uh, to sell to the public. Her clientele is very definite, Your Honor. She deals with the government uh, sporadically because she is a member of the PILJEPS. She does not uh, sell to the Supreme Court, however, because I, I definitely told her not to offer anything to the judiciary. Uh, you mentioned that it, um, uh, you purchase, I think it's a condo in Makati. Yes. Um, and this is uh, done on installment. But is the installment uh, liability reflected anywhere among your salens? No, I came to report this only after we already completed the payment, Your Honor. Uh, my belief at that time was when you are still paying by installment, it's not yet uh, time for you to declare. Maybe I was wrong, but uh, that is how I did it. And uh, the Compliance Committee of the Supreme Court has not called my attention at all to that uh, mistake, if it was a mistake, Your Honor. And my final question, uh, since you stated that the cell N is um, a joint declaration of your and uh, your wife's um, assets and liabilities and net worth. Uh, should there be need for the council to look further into um, your and your wife's uh, uh, assets, would you think that your wife would be willing to sign a waiver as well? Well, as far as that goes, Your Honor, I think so. I think so. Uh, as I mentioned, that was my last question. And with that, uh, Justice Persamine, I wish you luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions. Thank you very much. Uh I will now recognize uh, the Honorable Jose Mendoza to propound this question. Thank you, Senator. Uh, good morning, Justice Bershamin. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, this was already covered. Uh, in your essay, you wrote that uh, should you be appointed uh, the Chief Justice, you will enhance the rules on avoidance of cases that are shallow, unnecessary, and trivial, and limit access to the Supreme Court to only the worthy, novel, or impactful cases. Can you expound on this? Uh, during my tenure in the su Supreme Court, the early years, Your Honor, uh, I shared with many of my colleagues this problem of too many cases being brought to the Supreme Court as uh, original uh, special civil actions. And um, there really is no time for the court to address uh, other equally important cases. Now, I am not saying that this uh, number of cases uh, all involve uh, unimportant cases. They are important. Everything is important. 
but the time of the court is so limited that we really needed to resort to avoidance of constitutional uh, or pretending to be constitutional litigations that can be solved uh, better when they start at the lowest levels. Uh, there are existing rules on avoidance that are in place already, like standing, uh, political question, uh, deciding the issue if it is not necessary, avoiding deciding that issue, etc. And uh, uh, I'm not talking about present cases that are now pending in the court, but I need to point out that uh, there is really uh, a necessity for members of the court to adopt a stringent rule to filter these uh, unnecessary, unworthy cases. I remember that uh, I sat down with Justice Brion in a meaningful conversation on this because uh, we have inherited a lot of presidents that told us that if these cases were of transcendental importance, we can even ignore the uh, deficiencies of the petitions. But uh, I think it is high time for the court to be very strict in the filtering system because of the uh, volume, heavy volume of cases that have been filed with us, even the uh, uh, cases that do not present any justiciable controversy. They, they, it is very often, Your Honor. You also intend to inform the Congress on necessary legal reforms towards enhancing the administration of justice. Senator Gordon and Senator Pimentel are here. Uh, what legislation do you have in mind for the enhancement of the administration of justice? Well, Your Honor, uh, this one will refer necessarily to the lower courts only because the jurisdiction of the court cannot be impacted by the Congress unless it is with the con express consent of the Supreme Court. Now, as far as the lower courts are concerned, I think it is high time for us to clarify jurisdictional matters or issues that uh, have led to confusion. Uh, for instance, the Congress created the family courts. Before that time, there were no family courts, although we had this uh, juvenile and domestic court, which functioned uh, uh, m much like a uh, court of first instance, except that its jurisdiction covered uh, specific cases. Uh, involving the domestic issues. Now, we have now a family court which has uh, criminal jurisdiction. And this criminal jurisdiction of the family courts trenches into the jurisdiction of two levels of courts, like the municipal trial court and the uh, regional trial court when the uh, party involved is a minor. So, where you have this uh, family court, which is of the same level as the regional trial court, entertaining a case that would ordinarily belong to the municipal trial court. There is a good purpose for uh, the Congress to have legislated on this, but you see the practical side of this is that uh, there are many courts that are, uh, uh, it is only now that we have uh, filled up the positions for uh, the family courts. Uh, there, in the provinces, Your Honor, there are more first-level courts. And so if you took away from them this, uh, the jurisdiction over these cases involving minors, uh, maybe uh, it's high time to give them something back so that uh, they will have uh, uh, the justice system will be more made more responsive to the needs of those communities. Uh, that is one, Your Honor. Another thing is, uh, uh, aside from jurisdiction, I would like also the Congress probably to give more funds to the judiciary uh, if it is uh, feared by Congress that these funds could be recurring, uh, we could easily adopt a resolution in the Supreme Court to characterize these funds as non-recurring so that there will be more uh, funding support from the National Treasury to the infrastructure of the Supreme Court or the judiciary as a whole. I think those are the two that are most immediate in my mind, Your Honor. 
Balik tayo, Adyo. Okay na ba? Okay, balik po tayo sa ating pong uh, special coverage. Uh, selecting uh, the next uh, Chief Justice at ang uh, sumalang si uh, Justice uh, Lucas, Lucas Bersamin. Bers at uh, marami pong tinanong sa kanya. Actually, pati yung salen ni uh, Justice uh, Bersamin. The sitting Associate Justice of the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Hindi po ba yeah. ni Vidal? Supreme no? Court. Siya yung uh, sitting... Mm. Uh, Justice na super. Siya po ang unang sumalang. Mm -hmm. Oo, marami siyang, uh, maraming tinanong. Ang unang nagtanong po ang representative ng Integrated Bar, uh -huh. si Milagros uh, Fernand Cayosa po. Mm -hmm. Yun ang... So yung uh, last na uh, ni-raise ni uh, Justice Bersamin is about criminal jurisdiction ng family court. And ang uh, pagdagdag pa ng pondo no, sa judiciary non-recurring to give consideration. Pero kanina, ay yung mga tanong sa kanya, in fact, nailista natin na uh, Tony Vidal, no? yung uh, strengthen the confidence ng uh, judiciary, yung highlights po ng kanyang sinabi kanina, yun ding uh, to expand the uh, uh, strengthen the uh, field yeah? skills based over knowledge based education, uh, enhance, oh ito, infrastructure of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Yan, enhance delivery of justice, mm -hmm. uh, more responsibility to court of appeal, sinabi niya yan. Enhance capability of IBP. At uh, saka yung uh, sinabi niya, yung uh, mga kaso daw ng mga huwes ay ilipat sa mm -hmm. uh, co uh, court of appeals upang mm -hmm. mapabilis ang uh, trabaho. So, infra of trial courts. Infrastructure kasi mm -hmm. usually walang mga, walang mga korte. Kasamay nila nga lang, eh. wala kaming uh, korte doon hanggang ngayon. <laughs> ang hirap, no? Uh, ang hirap. Mm -hmm. Hiwa-hiwalay. Walang isang building. Mm -hmm. Malamig naman sa loob. Uh, malamig naman. Korte naman. Orte okay. naman. Mm -hmm. oh, para po, ma ito yung purpose is to prevent no? yung shortage ng uh, 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 tawag dito, no? ng, uh, uh, especially the quality infra no? uh, uh -oh. ng, uh, ng, po ng pondo dyan. So, yung enhance delivery din ng justice, kasi may mga inefficient at ng mga corrupt din na mga huwes. Marami pa bang ganun na uh, Tony Vidal? Ah, uh, siguro naman. Uh, basta, oh, sabi niya eh. Sabi niya. Eh, Nabibili alam, pa rin ba ang mga huwes ngayon uh, ng pera? Si hindi naman lahat, pero meron pa rin natitira. At sana ay eh, mag-report, di ba? Mag-report, ha? Oh, alam mo, oh. itong uh, tawag nito. Itong, pag, itong mga... Participatory pag, governance, ha? Oh, oh. Tayo na mismo ang tumulong sa gobyerno. Paulit-ulit ko sinasabi yan, eh. Oo, oh, oh, mag-report mag sila. Mag-report. 
Hindi yung wag kayong sumama sa nagbibigay. Oh, kayo oh. mag-report kayo sa nanghihingi. Idayan nyo 8888 yan. Sinabi ng Presidente, no? mayroon tayong ah, 8888. Natry ko yan, Aljo. Totoo. Effective, di ba? Effective. Okay. Nag, si... nag tumawag ako sa 888 oh. at uh, talagang pinorward sa uh, DFA. Okay, isulat nyo kay Special Assistant to the President, Bongo. No? Oh, oh. Action ka agad, mga kaibigan. Ha? Mabilis pa sa kidlat yan, si, si Sapgo. Pero anyway, kasi... Uh, as alter ego ng presidente no? oh, oh. participatory governance kung ano man makikita natin makatiwalian ng mga huwes kasi nga corruption campaign intensified sa ilalim po ng Pangulong Duterte no? corruption and illegal drugs yeah. medyo talagang particular presidente dyan tulungan po natin siya ha? so yun ha? mga corrupt na mga huwes meron pa rin inefficient enhanced cap capacity of the integrated bar of the Philippines upang disiplinahin po yung mga ranks of lawyers. Marami pa rin pong mga, well, hindi may iwasan yan, may mga pasaway mga, na mga may abogado. May mga abogado pa rin pasaway. <laughs> ang, tagal ko, ang tagal kong nag-head niyang hmm. bar discipline, hmm. talagang napakarami. Kasi ang magdidisiplina, IBP. IBP. Ang magdidisbar, IBP. Hindi. Recommendatory lang po ang IBP at Supreme Court ang may ang final say. Okay, Oo. so doon magsisimula the, uh, sa IBP? Sa IBP. Magre-reklamo. Pwede rin magreklamo sa uh, Korte Suprema hmm. pero pinapadala rin po yan sa IBP at may mga commissioners pong nag-iimbestiga hmm. hmm. At pagkatapos nun, dinadala sa Korte Suprema. Sa Korte Suprema. Kanina rin, eh, sinabi rin niya, ay na natanong din si Justice uh, Bersamin dun sa pag uh, pag uh, dagdag ng kanyang salen eh, na-explain naman po niya may dahil negosyo. may negosyo daw yung kanyang uh, asawa at hmm. uh, naging miyembro siya ng mga magagandang uh, 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 mga committee hmm. sa ano well anyway, uh, yung uh, disciplinary action ng IBP again, irereklamo mo sa Integrated Bar of the Philippines and uh. ang final say dyan ang Court Suprema, how about uh. yung mga fiscal? Di ba may nag-viral po sa social media uh -oh. yung uh, mag-asawa, buntes Sinita po ng MMDA. Mga ganong klase. Sa diba? IBP least, pa rin yan. IBP pa rin. At least meron pong camera nakatutok doon ng MMDA. Ha? So, ganon. Post ka oh, sa social media. etong mga public officers, officers of the court, particularly public officers, ha? Oh, empleyado ng gobyerno, mga officers of the court, abogado, mm -hmm. fiscal, prosecutor, at sino-sino pa. Hala, sige. Uh, i-post ka agad sa social media ha basta walang malisyoso lang ang uh, panin ang, ang 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 puna may katotohanan, may katotohanan lang wag kayong magpo-post po nang walang ha? katotohanan wala pong siraan Opo. at uh, kanina din nung sa interview ni uh, Justice Bersamin hmm. talaga naman pong uh, sabi ilang buwan na lang daw siya pagiging chief justice kung sakali labing tatlong buwan na lang ano daw po ang kanya pang uh, ma ma maitutulong sa sa Korte Suprema. Ayun, yung zero backlog. Hindi, yung zero backlog, eh, <laughs> mahihirapan daw siya doon kasi 1,535 naman ang pending Parang niya. Parang namanan niya, no? Ganun oh, talaga, no? Oh, sabi oh, nga niya na, ano, na-share niya nga bago siya pumasok dyan sa, uh, sa pagiging huwes. Pero sabi niya rin, i-expand daw niya yung publication ng mga judicial decisions. Kaya kasi nga, mm -hmm. yung mga judges, halos walang kopya. Walang kopya? Oo, oh, oh, kasi parang nag-rely na lang sa internet. Oh, hindi naman lahat may internet sa dulong-dulo ng, ng uh, Pilipinas. Eh dapat mag-provide na tayo kasi nga eh, technology oh. ngayon, di ba na? Oh, oh. Sa Arellano Law, meron po kami doong uh, law field project. Ah, lahat yun. ng mga jurisprudence, lalabas ka agad doon. Nagre-research ako doon. Uh, oh, <laughs> so, na-discuss na din yung alternative dispute resolution. Importante ito kasi nga, para maiwasan natin yung zero backlog, no? mga dockets. Oh, well, oh. Pwede namang i-solve Ah, uh, ipwede namang i-settle ang mga disputes outside the courtroom. Eh, why not, no? Nag-raise na siya kasi nakapag-train daw siya sa ibang bansa, iba doon kasi uh, uh, the judge can mediate on the case uh, as the case go along, pwede. Mm -hmm. uh, eh, pero dito parang may 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 difference lang konti. So gusto niyang i-raise din yan, no? Itong uh, Alternative dispute resolution. Meron nga tayong barangay, di ba? Mga barangay mediation, conciliation, oh, oh, oh. Yung... bago isang pang kaso, dadaan ka sa barangay. Kung kayo, the same barangay, at saka hmm. depende sa kaso. Kung maliit lang na kaso, dadaan sa barangay. Hmm. Ngunit kung malaking kaso, diretso na po yan sa korte. Hmm. Hindi na kailangan dumaan Pero sa yung barangay. mga malilit, away lang sa kapitbahay. Away, yung, yung ano, nagsampala, oh, nagmurahan, nagmurahan nagtapunan nag, nag, ng basura. Pinagaw si mister. Oo, nangagat ng aso. Ginagat ng tao. Oo, pinalo yung <laughs> aso. Meron mga ganun. Oh, barangay lang po yan. Ha? Pumunta lang kayo oh, sa barangay. 
Kasi nga, parang requirement bago ka isang magsampan Lalo ng kaso. Lalo na kung magkapit bahay. MTC, kung kapit bahay lang, Oo. huwag na po kayong pumunta sa korte. Napakadami na ng kaso riyan. At saka maganda hmm. sa barangay Adyo, kapag nagpirmahan kayo, susunod niyan, execution na. Execution For example, gagal. yung umuwi pa sa bahay niyo. Hmm. Pagkatapos nun, nagpirmahan na aalis after Ayun, one yun. month. Pwede na. Ngayon, yung, yung agreement nyo, decision ho yan ng korte. Hmm. Parang decision ng korte. Papa-execute mo na lang Ayan, yan. Ha? Yung mga small oh, claims din ng, ng pera. Sandali Ayun, lang oh, po yan. Madali. Ha? Paano po yan? Ah. 300,000 and Apa? below. Uh -huh. Pupunta ka sa, ano, sa MTC, Metropolitan Trial Court. Uh -huh. Pipirma ka lang po ng format. Format lang. Tapos magbabayad ka ng filing fee. O, hindi kailangan ng abogado. Papadala na sa BINA yung uh -huh. mga nangutang sa iyo. Uh -huh. Pagkatapos ng decision one day, one day, execution na. Ayan, ha? So, uh -huh. may, may uh, applicable ba attachment dyan kung hindi magbabayad? Oo, kung Pwede. hindi, hihilahin ang gamit. <laughs> o, oh, mabilis lang, di ba? Gamit. So, mabilis meron, lang. Meron tayong justice on wheels din, ha? O, oh, yan mga ganong klase. Uh -huh. uh, ano pa ba yun? Yung uh, change lang yata ng, uh, ng pangalan ng, sa birth certificate or punta ka uh -huh. lang sa seat. Civil Registry's Office, oh, si City Registry's Office, palitan mo lang yung pangalan mo doon. Meron tayong batas doon na turn in, hindi po ba? Na hindi ka na dadaan sa Pero program. tapos na ba yung interview o meron pa? Oh, meron pa ba? Meron hindi pa ko ba narinig eh. Kasi ang nagtanong pa lang kanina, si, ano, eh, si uh, Attorney Fernand Cayosa, tapos nagsimula si Justice sa... Uh, 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 okay, balikan natin. Oh, Pero hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa rin, ano? Ay, ah, nagka-problema po tayo. Nagka-problema sa audio nila. Sa audio. Kaya no? ngayon, mm -hmm. uh, ulitin, daw, ulitin natin yung uh, profile ni uh, uh, Justice uh, uh, Bersamin. Uh, sabi nga, eh, ito, nasa public service siya uh, bilang uh, private lawyer. Mm -hmm. Pero mahigit na tatlongpong taon na siya sa uh, public uh, service. Nagsimula siya maglingkod bilang presiding judge ng Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 96 noong 1986. Nagsilbi naman siya bilang associate justice ng Court of Appeals noong 2003 hanggang maging Supreme Court associate justice noong 2009. Ngayon, eh, anim na po't walong taong gulang na po si associate justice Bersamin at kung siya ka, sakaling siya ang mahirang na bagong chief justice, magre-retire na siya sa Oktobre sa susunod na taon. Kasi po, 70 years old ang mga justices. Pag nag-birthday sila ng 70 years old nila, retired na sila. Retired na. Mm -hmm. So talaga namang, alam mo na yung trabaho mo hanggang 70 years old ka. Yan. He placed yes. uh, the 9th in the 1973 uh, bar exams after nakapagtapos po ng abugasya sa University of the of East. The East. Ano ko yan? At law galing school niya to ni Vidal. Law school ko rin po yan. Galing po ako. Isa alumnus akong alumnus na, ako. Alumnus Actually, UA. meron kami, isisingit ko na, meron Sige kaming po. alumni reunion sa September 29. <laughs> Yung mga graduate ng UE, all colleges po. Hmm. Ako po ang overall chairman ng alumni reunion. Dito sa September 29, magpunta po kayo. Uh, mura lang po ang bayad. Yan, Thank ha? you. Thank <laughs> Binabati ko rin lahat ng mga estudyante, law school, Uh, law students, law professors, uh, kay uh, Sir Kaiko, bubut Kaiko ng Arellano University School of Law. Alam mo, uh, dapat na, makinig, na, na, makinig sila sa mga interview mga at saka manood. Mga parista ha, uh, good luck na lang ngayong November, ha? magkukuha po ng bar exams. At saka dapat manood sila dito kasi usual hmm. yung tinatanong dito ay Apo. lumalabas sa bar exam. Ha? Naman, okay. So, As, uh, si Just, Associate Justice Lucas Bersamin, He voted in favor of the following. Oi, may mga kontrobersyal ang mga kaso under Duterte administration. Yung pung pag-acquit ni GMA Arroyo acquittal in plunder case 2016. Ang paglilibing po ng dating pangulong Ferdinand Marcos sa libingan ng mga bayani November 2016. Upholding of Marcelo Declaration in Mindanao 2017. At ang paggrant po ng co-warrant petition. Para mapatalsik si Attorney Maria Lourdes Sereno, May 2018. No, yan, ha? So, co-warrant to petition, I'm sure itatanong to sa bar exams. Oo, yung 2008. Lalo, <laughs> lalo na yung co-warrant to, talagang itatanong nila yan. Hmm. At alam nyo ba, ang uh, ma maganda pa dito sa public interview, makikita talaga yung disposition ng, ano, hmm. ng mga aplikante para sa next Chief Justice. Talagang kung nagugulat ba o, o ano yung natatakot ba, parang hmm. talagang kitang-kita mo 
Uh, ito si Justice Versa, minakita ko naman yung confidence niya sa pagtanong at very eloquent siya sa pag-answer. Mm. Yun ang, ang, ang ano, sa bagay, matagal na po siyang uh, abogado dahil 1973 bar exam. Oh, ilang, ilang taon na yan. So, Mahina ako sa mata, Arjo. <laughs> Kaya ako nag-lawyer. <laughs> so, ang kanina yata nagtanong, si yung, yung uh, uh, retired uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Mendoza, Mendoza no? oh, bumalik yata kay attorney... I forgot the name. Kayosa. Yung, Kayosa. No, hindi ko maabasa kasi. Hindi, kasi yan recorded ito. earlier na yan eh. Ito yung recorded earlier, no? Oo. So, nagka-problema lang po tayo sa audio. Hopefully, makabalik ka agad tayo. Hopefully, ha? makabalik yun ang, tayo. Yun ang inaabangan natin mga televiewers, ha? Okay, so ginagawa po natin ng paraan. May balik po ka agad. Ito, si ito yung kanina, ha? Recorded earlier kay Associate Justice Bersamin. Oo, okay? tinanong ni Justice Mendoza kanina. Ah. Ano yung mga kanyang gagawin? O kung uh, kung up kung siya ay maupo nga uh, Chief Justice. Kasi, ang sabi niya daw sa kanya, kasi meron niyang mga ginagawang ano eh, parang before mag-start ang interview, actually, alam ko yan, dahil marami akong sinasamahan ng mga aplikante, Opo. bago umupo ng alas 9, 8 to 9, meron niyang ano, written exam. May written exam pa? Yes, iba-iba. Ano? Mambubunot sila kung hmm. ano ang mabunot nila. Kaya earlier, may written exam yan. Yung written exam niya, oh. ni Justice Bersamin, nilagay niya doon kung ano ang kanyang gagawin upang mabawasan ang kaso sa uh, Korte Suprema. Isa sa nilagay niya ay pag, pag dismiss o pagpapaalis ng mga shallow cases, yung mga baliwalang kaso daw. Hmm. Sa kanya daw ay uh, sabi niya kanina, pag sinabi yung mo mga, mga walang shallow mga unworthy cases, cases, unworthy cases, unworthy I mean. cases katulad ng mga katulad daw ng mga kailangan uh, parang wala namang Uh, constitutional issue oh. pinapalabas may constitutional issue oh. kasi ang aakyat lang dapat sa Korte Suprema yung question of law eh question of law lang oh, hindi oh. question of facts no hindi. Kasi, kasi wala nang ebidensya doon wala nang ebidensya so ang mangyari diyan certiorari no sa oh, mga oh. mga law students sa mga abogado oh, oh. Uh, certiorari oh, oh. yun yung uh, yan ayan na alam mo yan <laughs> Yung, Sir Shirari, uh, wala nang remedy wala yan. Ruiz, uh, out of jurisdiction na oh, at saka yung uh, grave in, abuse of in, discretion. Yan, in excess of jurisdiction yan, or with grave abuse of, of discretion. discretion. Yan uh, ang Sir Shirari. Sir Shirari. Yan ang umaakyat sa Korte Suprema. O question of law, ibig sabihin, mayroong na labag na batas. Hmm. E eh, usually, yung mga iba, umaakyat lang sa Korte Suprema para lang mapatagal yung kaso. Hmm. Ngayon, titingnan daw nila yon yung mga kasong yon at automatically i-dismiss kung talagang sa tingin niya dilatory tactic lang. Aha. Uh -huh. So i-dismiss ka agad. Oh, i-dismiss yun ng isa sa kanyang gagawin, sabi niya. Enhance ang avoidance ng shallow or uh, dahil sa dami ng kaso, kaso. sa Korte Suprema. Mm -hmm. At saka sabi niya nga i-enhance din daw niya yung uh, jurisdiction at uh, power ng JBC. Mm -hmm. Sinabi niya dahil marami rin daw ang na-appoint ng na mga uh, mga Hmm. na hindi naman dapat ma-appoint kasi daw yung nag-iimbestiga kasi usually alam mo pag nag-apply nag ka diyan hmm. ang ginagawa Aljo ano pupunta ka pupunta yan sa NBI ibibigay sa NBI pagkatapos yung NBI iimbestigahan pati yung neighbor mo hmm. ano mo masasabi mo dito sa taong ito mm -hmm. at tapos yung mga kasama mo sa trabaho ako bilang uh, representative ng Integrated Bar tsaka presidente ng Women Lawyers Association, lagi akong natatanong. Mm. Binibigyan ako ng survey form. Sabihin sa akin, uh, attorney, i-fill up mo to. So, nilalagay doon kung anong pagkakilala sa tao. Mm. E usually, NBI. Ngayon, ang gusto ni Justice Bersamin, siguro, may sarili ng investigative arm ang JBC. Okay. So, yun ha. Uh, ang mga kasong iniaakyat po dyan sa Korte Suprema, again, hindi na po pakikilaman yung mga ebidensyang na i-present, no? Dyan po sa lower courts. Kung oh, makita oh. po yan sa Court of Appeals, eh, mas matibay po kung ano po ang napag-usapan sa, sa lower courts, yung certiorari yan ang pinag-usapan, wala bang jurisdiction ang, ang korte yung nag-design yan. May oh. mga pang-abuso ba? Grave abuse of discretion, certiorari, yung mga kasong co involving constitutionality po ng treaty, yung oh. international or executive agreement, ha? yung uh, uh, proclamations, no? yung mga orders, instructions, mga ordinansan, iba pang mga regulasyon, ha? yung uh, constitutionality, no? applications po, operation of presidential decrees, ha? At uh, ano pa, uh, marami pang iba, mamaya, 
Okay na ba? Okay, balikan natin ha. Uh, ang Court uh, uh, Suprema ay balikan natin. Uh, if I... Yes, yes, please. May I just for the record resume? Session is resumed. Uh, and with apologies to Justice uh, Mendoza, I should have called uh, Attorney Ilov first. But uh, I was so engrossed in the presence of Justice Mendoza. So I forgot the, <laughs> the sequence of events. With apologies. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Okay, let me answer now your question, Your Honor. If I would uh, suggest uh, an amendment to the internal rules to accommodate, uh, to address this matter of inheriting cases? Yes, because uh, 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 for, the, uh, for the public's consumption, the rule is that uh, the, uh, a newly appointed justice will inherit the load of his predecessor, but if your uh, if uh, the your predecessor has a low load, the other justices will unload to equalize. But if you inherit, like in the case of Justice Bersamin, a high load, 1,800, the justices will no longer uh, unload. But you. Uh, uh, you inherit the whole 1,800 cases. So uh, do you have uh, any intention of uh, amending the rules on that? I think, Your Honor, that it will be self-serving for me to make that suggestion immediately after if I should uh, be appointed. But uh, I am sure that it will be in the minds of all members of the court so by the time I probably will retire next year, I may have the opportunity to make that uh, suggestion or proposal to the court to consider because it's really a problem for uh, uh, all incoming uh, justices who inherit uh, large uh, loads. Thank you very much, uh, Justice. That's all. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, Judge Hilo is now recognized. Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Gordon. Your apology is accepted, but uh, giving the priority to Justice Mendoza and to question the Justice Bersamin. Uh, anyway, there's no hard and fast rule. You cannot, you cannot uh, even ask questions. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, good morning, uh, Justice Bersamin. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel uh, sitting there? Uh, well, I feel like uh, I belong to, I, I am home because this is anyway the Supreme Court and I've gone through this process uh, once before. All right, uh, really amazing about uh, your vision for the Supreme Court when you were required to uh, prepare an essay to the topic question. Uh, really do not uh, question the laudable objective of your uh, alleged reform in the Supreme Court. And going back to the cases uh, on record that, that you have uh, inherited or you have a pending cases of uh, 180 cases uh, in your uh, division? No, Your Honor. My total load is about uh, 1,500, counting the judicial and the administrative uh, cases. Uh, but the reckoning is mostly on the uh, judicial uh, cases. So what is the regulatory period for an associate justice to resolve case before him or in his division? It's uh, two years, Your Honor, from the time the case is submitted for uh, resolution or decision. And these cases of yours have been pending and you have not decided, uh, mind you, or resolved within the regulatory period? Well, Your Honor, it's not uh, accurate to say that uh, I have violated uh, that uh, uh, restrictive period of two years. Uh, maybe uh, it is best to say it this way. The court processes these cases and uh, adheres to the tenets of due process. 
We cannot consider a case uh, ready for resolution until uh, the parties are told that uh, this case is now ready for resolution. Uh, our practice in the court is that uh, in the end bank, in the bank cases, where a member uh, asks for time to reflect or uh, submit uh, uh, his uh, or her ideas on the ponencia that you submit, the court cannot but grant that time. Now, we do not uh, include that time in the reckoning of the two-year period. That may take uh, longer than uh, what is in the internal rules because we have had uh, experiences of cases being uh, uh, suspended in uh, resolution uh, over a period of two years. I, cannot, I will not cite uh, a specific word, but I can tell you later on in private, Your Honor, uh, I know of so many such cases. But uh, the point here is all cases are deliberated, whether it is the bank or uh, the division that uh, deals with these cases. Now, as far as administrative uh, matters or cases are concerned, uh, we have to contend with the investigation by the appropriate bodies. If the person involved is a, uh, an employee of the uh, judiciary or a judge, the court administrator's office uh, has to investigate that because we are not a fact-finding uh, uh, office. Uh, if it is lawyers who are involved there, well, we have the reference referral to the Integrated Bar of the Philippines for investigation. I agree that uh, many of us in the court uh, cannot meet the two-year deadline. It is physically impossible, but we do our best, Your Honor. Now, lately, in the report that I submitted, uh, there were uh, at least uh, nine cases that I decided because they were clustered. Uh, I think I submitted this report. Uh, this was only recently decided because the nature of these cases uh, is that uh, we needed to deliberate very carefully because it, it involved uh, the definition of a crime, uh, the nature of syndicated estafa. I, I already reported that out and uh, we voted on that, Your Honor. Now, there are other cases that uh, have exceeded the two-year period, but I think it is in the process now that uh, we are uh, going to resolve these cases through unsigned resolutions, Your Honor. What is the elementary period for the judges in the first uh, and uh, second level courts? I understand that they have only 90 days from the submission of the case for resolution or decision. Yes, that is true, Your Honor. 90 days or three months, uh, they have that. But uh, these are the trial level, the trial judges, Your Honor. And uh, the reason why it takes us longer is that the volume of cases for 15 justices is just too high for us to comply, physically speaking, with this uh, mandated uh, two-year period. Why impose uh, disciplinary actions on judges in the first and level courts if not meeting the regulatory period? How come that justices uh, are not uh, given such disciplinary sanctions? Good that you asked that question, Your Honor. I've been also <laughs> <laughs> with the judiciary for almost uh, I will. Years. May I speak in uh, Filipino, Your Honor? Mayroon pong pagkakaiba yung uh, Supreme Court doon sa trial judge, sa trial court. Ang Supreme Court ay division. Ang trial court uh, usually nag-iisa. Ngayon, ang kanyang dinideside doon or uh, dinidesisyonan ay simple pa lamang kasi fax uh, doon siya magagawa ng uh, uh, findings of fact. Yung impact ng decision niya is only immediately doon sa parties lamang. Okay, not much care is given to that. But the point here is if that judge encounters a problem of meeting the deadline, meron siyang leeway na humingi ng extension. And no matter kung kailan siya hihingi, pinagbibigyan lagi yan kung may dahilan. 
Ngunit kung tamad po yung judge, eh, maunawaan namin na hindi na siya pwedeng bigyan ng extension. Now, kami po sa Supreme Court, wala kaming pwedeng mas mataas na hihingan ng extension. Ha? Kami na po ang pinakamataas sa hudikatura at uh, practical lamang naman kami dahil uh, lahat ng mga pinag-uusapan naming mga kaso ay kailangan nakalagay sa agenda. Kung hindi po ilalagay sa agenda yan, hindi po namin pwedeng pag-usapan. Yan po ang dahilan. Now, kung hindi po nakalagay sa agenda yan, hindi namin malalaman na ganun na pala katagal unless na merong magtatawag sa aming pansin na matagal na. Now, saan kami kukuha ng extension? Wala po. Kami na rin mismo ang magbibigay uh, ng sarili naming uh, period or panahon na gawan ng desisyon. Ngayon, sa division, lima po ang kailangan na bumoto bawat resulta ng kaso. Sa inbank po ay 15 kung puno po ang Supreme Court. Yan po ang pagkakaiba. Salamat po sa kapaliwanag dito. Who I treated it, it differently. A source for a goose is a source for the gender. Bakit po ganun? Ah, is, uh, is there any imposition? Uh, wala naman po. Ang problema lang po dyan is, kung may desisyon ng Supreme Court, uh, marami pong may karoon ng impact dyan, mang maapektuhan. Doon sa trial judges, kaya sila binigyan ng uh, 90 days lamang po, eh, dapat magsipag sila na gumawa ng kanilang paghuhusga sa mga bagay-bagay uh, na nandun sa kanila. At uh, pwede naman silang humiling ng extension, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, kung ang panahon na nakalaan sa Konstitusyon ay hindi sapat. Thank you. All right, uh, when the media posted about your application for the position of Chief Justice, there were some citizens who were asking for your delicadeza. What are your thoughts on this? Ang problema po sa delicadeza ay wala pong definite rules po dyan. Uh, kahit na po sumali ako doon sa issue ng uh, quo warranto, yung ba po ang tinutukoy ng mga netizens? Apo, Justice. Okay. Kung ako ay dapat na mag-inhibit dito sa application na ito, dapat din mag-inhibit yung mga pumabor kay Justice Melo uh, Sereno. Hindi po hindi po pantay-pantay kung kami lang na lumaban sa kanya ha, ay mag-inhibit dito sa pilian na ito. I don't see it that way. I must uh, insist na kung sila ay they feel so much that uh, I have no delicadeza, then they should also ask whoever voted in favor. Unfortunately, walang sumali ngayon na nagpabor kay uh, Justice Sereno. So I don't think that is a, a good uh, question, Your Honor. I do not need to dignify that with... Uh, a, a longer answer. All right, Senator, can I have uh, my Please one go ahead. last uh, Of course. Uh, All right. Yeah. A news uh, reports claim that you filed a one-page uh, letter complaint against Justice uh, Leonin for his gross distortion of facts in his uh, widely publicized dissent in your ponentia, granting bail to Senator Enrile. That is uh, Enrile versus Sandigan Bayan. What is the status of uh, your le letter complaint? I did not file a letter complaint, Your Honor. I just wrote the bank at the time. I did not intend that to be a complaint. I just brought the, to the attention of the bank this matter of uh, a justice who voted with the minority interfering with the autonomy of the majority. You see, we operate under this principle of uh, majority and minority. If you are in the minority of an issue, 
You cannot uh, dictate on how the majority will write its decision and uh, get the votes. Now, the point here is, Your Honor, I did not complain. I just brought this matter to the attention of the uh, bank. Now, if the bank did not consider this worth uh, further discussion, which I think it, it, it did not uh, consider, uh, that was the end of it. Now, what was publicized, Your Honor, was a leaked copy of my letter. And the media, uh, I, di I don't know how <laughs> they got that uh, copy, Your Honor, but the media feasted on that, and I cannot control that anymore, Your Honor. One last, last question, Senator. Please, <laughs> What sets you apart from your colleagues? Other applicants are for uh, the position of Chief Justice. That's a very difficult question, Your Honor. <laughs> I'd rather be humble and uh, modest in my uh, as to my qualifications. But uh, one of the things that I am uh, bringing to this position, if ever I have that privilege and honor to be so appointed, is uh, my long years in the in service of the judiciary which uh, gave me, I think, uh, enough adequate experience uh, to uh, lead the judiciary as the Chief Justice. I also would like to mention, Your Honor, that uh, all members of the court right now share a common passion for all members of the judiciary, for all workers of the judiciary, and for the public in general. That is why any one of us will easily qualify for this position. And uh, I am humble enough to know that uh, I cannot uh, assert uh, precedence over my two colleagues or three or four colleagues who are also vying for this position. Uh, thank you and uh, good luck, Justice. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, uh, Judge Hila, for your questions. I think I'm entitled to some questions, if I may, with the permission of everyone. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, thank uh, the good justice for his candidness, and I would just like to uh, uh, begin my questions by asking, what are the threats to, in your in your view, on political in, on on the independence of the judiciary right now? Well, Your Honor. Uh Right now, I see the issue of independence of the judiciary as uh, uh, made up of two uh, components, Your Honor, the internal and the external. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question was about threats to the independence of the judiciary. Well, Your Honor, all institutions of government are right now threatened by technology. We are uh, in an age where uh, Complaints, uh, issues are raised uh, so fast that uh, those concerned are uh, seldom up to the uh, up to the uh, up to it to respond to such uh, uh, complaints or concerns. Now, the internal uh, uh, aspect of independence of the judiciary has to do with the quality of the judges, and uh, I think I explained that uh, a little while ago about uh, having uh, better or qualified judges to man the uh, courts. Now, threats to the independence of the judiciary in that respect will be thwarted very easily if we have uh, competent, uh, knowledgeable judges who dispense justice. Uh, because the functioning of the courts is, that, uh, is very peculiar in one sense, Your Honor its uh, officials are not elected by the people. So these judges do not run for re-election or for election, and there is no way for them to gauge the trust and confidence of the public in their uh, actuations, except through administrative complaints. Now, to ensure their uh, quality and to defend them from uh, these threats to the independence of the judiciary, we should have more qualified judges who are uh, independent-minded. Now, independence of the judiciary, Your Honor, I think, uh, rests on uh, giving a judge or a court 
the necessary freedom to decide cases without fear or favor. And uh, one of those uh, things that are very good at thwarting these threats is to give these judges security of tenure, which we already have, uh, by giving them until the age of 70 to function as such during good behavior. But uh, another important aspect of this is giving them financial security. Now, right now, judges uh, are, paid, uh, are paid enough, I think. Although no one will ever be satisfied uh, with whatever uh, he or she receives. Now, the external, Your Honor, is this. Uh, the Supreme Court is one of the three political branches of government. Regardless of what others think about the Supreme Court as non-political, Your Honor, I think it is a political agency like the executive and the Congress in the sense that the Supreme Court also uh, issues policy statements regarding uh, matters that affect the entire country. Now, I am sure that if it is a political agency or body, it is also subject to the importunings of pressure from other uh, sectors of society, particularly from those who make up the uh, executive and the legislative uh, branches of government. But uh, in my experience as a judge, Your Honor, for uh, many years now, since 1986, I, I, I must uh, insist that I have never felt pressured from the other, by the other branches of government. They have been very respectful towards the uh, judges and the justices. And this uh, is demonstrated by how the Supreme Court has arrived at its decisions, especially in the uh, sensitive cases, Your Honor, like uh, the DAP, the PDAF, uh, and other cases uh, that uh, are close to the hearts of the other branches of government. We have not hesitated in the Supreme Court to render our decisions. Now, of course, there will always be pressure in the sense that uh, we may be concerned also about how the other members of, how the other branches of government would react to our decisions. But that is personal on the part of its justice, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I asked that general question because I wanted to lead on to the specific questions. Hindi kayo threatened ang mga pinapatay ng mga judges kayo? Maraming judges na pinapatay. What are you going to do about that? I mean, uh, wala akong narinig na masyadong malakas na sigaw sa judiciary na dapat protection na yung mga judges. Sapagkat ko ang judge sa baba ay pinapatay, eh, matatakot lahat siyang west, lalo na yung mga sa malalayong lugar. Ano po ang gagawin oh, Marami pong ginawa na ng Supreme Court tungkol dyan. Mga uh, tao yung dapat gawin ay dapat maproteksyonan. Do you agree with that po? Yes. yes Otherwise, uh, an activist judiciary. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. And uh, sometimes the executive through the police agencies have uh, has duly responded, Your Honor. Sometimes? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I still, I, I, you know, I'm a big, uh, I'm very big in, this, uh, in the uh, Senate on Riding in tandem. I think the judiciary should not only be concentrating on the uh, proceedings before it, but I'm sure you have a department here that gathers statistics uh, that can be passed on with respect to the separation of powers. Na medyo sumasabra at pinapatay at kulang na kulang ang solution. And therefore, to me, again, it remains it, it creates a certain amount of judicial activism, although. Uh, presenting the cold statistics, let's say, of judges na pinatay, fiscals na pinatay, kamakay na lang, buntis yung prosecutor, pinatay. Hindi natin alam kung totoo na yung pumatay doon, eh, yun talaga. Uh, <laughs> dahil sa umbudsman galing yun, no? Uh, but at the, at the other hand, uh, I'm sure, meron ho ba sa judiciary? O, oh, kaya ba kayo nilikhain na may papublish ito? Oh, ito na ang mga namatay na West, ito na ang namatay na prosecution, and up to now, wala pang solusyon ang kaso. Yeah, the, Because I think that yes. is a threat. Pag tinakot ng West, matatakot na lahat siya. Yeah, opo. Uh, ang Supreme Court in the, previous year, in the past years and up to now has always been uh, trying to respond to this uh, matter, Your Honor. There was a time uh, during the time of Chief Justice Puno 
when uh, we mulled the idea of uh, having a force under the direct supervision of the Supreme Court similar to the marshals in the United States. But then we came up with a study and uh, we learned that uh, that would have been very expensive and we were not with that expertise, Your Honor. So we, re, uh, we again began to look uh, towards the direction of the police agencies and the NBI for uh, that concern, Your Honor. Let me go to another point, Paul. I just wanted to see how the uh, analysis of the good justices is so far as the stretch are concerned. Sinabi niyo kayo na maraming judges na may kakulangan. Nakikita namin niya sa Judicial Bar Council. Nakikita ko may, may mga nag-a-apply. Nakalagay 3X. Nakalagay 2X. Ako na kumisan nahihirapan. Hindi naman ako snooty na. Siyempre, kumisan eh, uh, namatay yung nanay, hindi nakapag-review, bumaksak. Pero I go deeper. There are 108 law schools in this country. But if you look at the statistics, sa inyo ang pumasa 25%. Yung kay Justice uh, Presby, umabot data ng 50? 59%. 59%. That is a record of sorts. Pero pagtingin nyo, I think sa amin mga 19% ng panahon namin. No? Pero on the record, lumalabas 25, 23, 22, 19. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin ba nun, eh, kulang sa luto yung mga niluluto ng mga eskwela para maging mahusay na abogado? O baka naman masyadong unfair yung examiner? O yan ba eh, dahil sa, uh, sa basic pa lang ng lawyer, dinagdagan na natin yan, dapat may A, B na education or four years bago ka maging lawyer. Pero ganun pa rin. Eh. Mababa pa rin ang pumapas sa bar. At ang reflection niya, pag dito sa judiciary, sabi niyo nga kanina, pag nakakuha tayo ng West na medyo mahina, mahaba ang proseso lalo, mahaba at nadidelay. So, anong view niyo ho dyan sa uh, qualification ng lawyer, siyang sistema nating ng bar? Uh, wala pong direct na effect yan po. Kasi the qualifications of judges is that minimum of five, of five years of law practice Correct. for the lower first level courts and minimum of 10 years of practice for the uh, second level courts. Now, the problem is, here comes a guy who although he passed very high, with very high grades, the bar exams, but did not do well in that five-year or ten-year period, that, that uh, guy is not definitely prepared for the judiciary. Pero lumulo sa ito sa Judicial Bar Council. Would it not be time now na pwedeng gawin na siguro uh, payagan nyo na merong mga solicitors, merong mga barristers, para yung inyong lisensya pag gumasa kayo, eh, ikaw barrister ka, na ikaw mag argue sa court, <laughs> o ikaw ang tigasunat ng mga pleadings, is it about time to do that? Because separate commission, there is a limitation in the facility of expression of the written word or of the oral word when you're arguing before the court. Yeah, many years ago, Your Honor, when uh, Justice Abad was still with the court, I think he made that proposal. If you got uh, lower than 80 in the bar exams, if you got lower than 80 in the bar exams, you should be confined to your uh, province or a certain area in the Philippines. Oh, opo. The problem, we immediately shut down that uh, idea because the problem was this. The Philippines is a contiguous uh, property or uh, land. You cannot <laughs> determine who would be violating the boundaries that you would define in imposing such condition. So that proposal, Your Honor, is similar to what you are saying. Maybe we should segregate or... Uh, uh, distinguish between two classes like they what they do in the British system. That's correct. Yes. So now, dapat eh, yung mag-argue talagang after all lawyers are supposed to be knights, di ba? Ay na natutuhan namin ng araw sa kapag. Yes, Your Honor. They are the ones that argue the case in a joust before the court. Pero pero mga tao na magaling talagang sumulat at uh, magaling magpleading. Pero may mga lawyers na magaling magsalita pero hindi makapasa. Kaya di ba nakakadagdag yun sa delay? Uh, tama po yun. Uh, ang uh, sagot ko po dyan, ganito po. Uh, maybe it's time for us to overhaul the law profession. But the problem here, Your Honor, is the Supreme Court has nothing to do with the curriculum that is confined to the jurisdiction of the LEB, the Legal Education Board. That is a law. 
But the Supreme Court only has jurisdiction now after that uh, bar passer becomes but if you a were member Chief of the Justice, bar. You would certainly have influence. Yes, over we will that. look into that, Your Honor. I am uh, uh, open to that uh, very good observation, Your Honor. Uh -huh. I will uh, try to segregate. Yes, sir. Th thank you. I, I, I still have a lot of questions, but sa Senado ko kasi, when we ask a question, yung answer, hindi siya nasama sa time. Hindi mo kasi nasama dito, i-clean ho. So, I just have one last uh, uh, question to you na. Napansin ko, Supreme Court Justices na kayo, pinakuha pa kayo na examen bago kayo pumunta dito. I mean, written exam. I find that demeaning, quite frankly. That's just my personal point of view. Justice sa na Supreme Court, ang dami niya nang ginawa na, na, na dapat kami, magtatanong kami, anong ginawa mo din sa decision na ito? Pero pag susulat kayo, iba na yan. Dahil para namang ipinapaulit siya. What do you think about that? Do you think dapat gagawin ulit yan namin next time? I will wait for the time, Your Honor, when I will be chairman. <laughs> <laughs> that is a political... Uh, are, you, are you sure you're not running for senator? Or, uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I am not a Gordon, Your Honor. <laughs> no, no, no. Gordons are run only where they will make a difference. That's why I, want, I will not be a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess we can now go to the... Are we now going to the next one? Next. Uh, <laughs> justice De Castro. Meron pa ba tayong time? Uh, magtanong? No, we have time. No, we have time pala eh. Uh, uh, so, did you know, I think we still have time. Would, you, would the panelists still like to ask uh, questions? Yes. Ah, no more questions. Okay. No more, no more. Thank you, thank you, Justice uh, Bersamin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Natapos na po si Justice Bersamin sa kanyang uh, pagtatanong, ano? Uh, nasa holding Masyado room. Masyado mo discriminatory yung sinabi na pag yung huli? below 80 percent ang grado mo, kapag uh, ikaw ay nakapasa sa bar, pero below 80 percent ang nakuha mo, doon ka na lang makakonfine sa mga probinsya. Doon ka maka-appoint sa probinsya <laughs> kung mag apply ka na dyan. Eh, Mayroon talagang hindi exams. naman. <laughs> hindi naman po dapat yun. Pero mm -hmm. ano lang, uh, parang uh, kwentuhan lang yun. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, ipapatawag siguro kasi actually nasa holding area si Justice uh, De Castro at si Justice Peralta, hindi nila naririnig. Nakakonfine, so hindi, hindi, Naka hindi nila maririnig. Hindi nila maririnig ang tanong. Ano yung mga usual uh, questions doon sa written exams na Tony Vidal? Nagbubut nagbubunotan sila eh. Mm -hmm. Katulad nito, ang nabunot siguro ni Justice sa uh, Bersamin mm -hmm. ay uh, kung ano ang kanyang gustong gawin sa Korte Suprema. Baka lahat-lahat pare-pareho ang tanong sa kanila. Mm. Minsan, ang, ang tanong dyan ay isang uh, decided cases. Idadisect mo yung decided case. case. Mm, Minsan, ganun. dalawa o tatlong decided cases in one hour. In one hour. Mm -hmm. Napakahirap po. Kaya uh, talagang kung yung gusto nyo mag-apply, eh, maghanda po tayo. <laughs> so, alam po natin, no? yung uh, Korte Suprema Original and Appellate Jurisdiction. Ang uh, dinidecide lang po dyan sa Court Suprema, Attorney Vidal, no? uh, can you guide me on this? No? I-review, i-revise, i-reverse, i-modify, i-affirm, on appeal, or certiorari. Yung sinabi natin, yeah, certiorari. Oh. Yung certiorari, grave abuse of discretion, or in excess, or lack of jurisdiction. Jurisdiction niya ng certiorari. Pro prohibition, mandamus, andun din yung co-warrant to. Diba kung naalala natin, yung co-warto petition oh, oh. na i-file na, 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 na against uh, Attorney uh, Sereno. No? Parang Kaya, nakasalang na si Justice De Castro. Andiyan doon na, ah. na nakaupo na eh. O oh, sige, wala oh, pa. Siguro, pa tayo. Sige. Mag, mag, uh, tatanungan hmm. yan. Ano kaya ang itatanong? Okay na ba? Okay na? Punta natin Court Suprema? Go ahead. Okay. Supreme Court. Justices of your caliber here. Uh, we don't have the uh, first question. Uh, the, uh, Mila Cayoso, uh, Attorney Cayoso, will you please, uh, Cayoso? Thank you, Senator Gordon. Uh, good morning, Justice De Castro. Good morning. Uh, you have definitely impressive credentials and extensive experience that would be helpful uh, should you be nominated and appointed as Chief Justice. However, you will only be able to serve about two months. Yes, sure. About even less than that, no? Because uh, you are expected to retire um, because you will reach the mandatory age of retirement on October 8th of this year. What can you realistically accomplish in less than two months that will make a lasting difference in the Supreme Court 
and improve the administration of justice in our country. Your Honor, it is not as if that I will start today. I've been working on judicial reform projects since 2009. Um, I was appointed in 2007, and uh, there were a series of, uh, or a succession of retirement of the senior justices, and uh, in two years' time, I was the seventh uh, senior justice in the court, and because of that, I had to assume numerous responsibilities, um, one of which is the uh, chairmanship of the Management Committee on Judicial Reform um, Support Projects. Uh, this designation um, began during the time of Justice uh, Renato Puno. And I had a chance to co coordinate the efficient uh, implementation of the judicial reform support project. Uh, during the, those, during the time of uh, Chief Justice Puno and uh, Chief Justice Corona, who also maintained my chairmanship in the management committee, I was able to accomplish a number of uh, projects. And um, there were continuing ones. Um, during the time that uh, the term of Justice Corona ended, and this pertained to the computerization of the um, many of the functions of the judiciary. As early as 2009, I was able to present to the court and bank the approval of the Enterprise Information System Plan, which was developed by a consulting firm the INDRA, which was uh, paid out of the uh, World Bank uh, loan proceeds. And uh, this um, enterprise information system plan um, was to be implemented in a period of uh, several years. So um, at the time that I was the chair of that committee, there were three important projects in the pipeline. Uh, the first one is the Judiciary Case Management System. And this case management system would, uh, if developed, will be able to um, record and monitor the progress of cases from the time it is filed uh, in the trial court until it reaches the appellate court and finally decided by the Supreme Court. So uh, this is, this is a, syst a tracking system uh, where you can easily find the, um, the progress of a case. So that was already slated to be implemented. And um, when, before I was uh, removed as uh, chair of the Committee on Computerization after Chief Justice Corona's term ended, uh, we already had in place the terms of reference for the hiring of the consultant for the JCMS. This is the Judiciary Case Management System, which is very important to improve the workings, the operation of the, the um, judiciary. And then there's another project. The other project is the Enterprise Resource Planning System. This will cover the, uh, the financial system, the administrative system, the um, accounting, auditing, the attendance of uh, attendance and leave, leaves of personnel and other numerous uh, administrative matters, uh, which is also due for, for development, initially by the hiring of a specialized consultant that will, uh, that will um, study and develop the, this, uh, this ERP, uh, the Enterprise Resource Planning System. So um, when, when when um, I was replaced in, in, as chair of the Committee on Computerization and Library, there are already terms of reference uh, prepared, ready for, to, and this, uh, this is for the bidding out of these consultancy uh, uh, services. But uh, it was stopped. Uh, and so if, um, I'm fortunate to be appointed Chief Justice. All I need to do is to revive this, uh, this project together with the case management information system for the Supreme Court, which was also stopped 
uh, when I was removed from the chairmanship of the committee. So the terms of reference for the hiring of the three consultants uh, for these projects are already in place. All that we need to do is to um, update these terms of reference. And I've talked with the, MISO, the uh, staff of the Management Information Systems Office. And uh, I was told that we need only two to three weeks to be able to update these terms of reference. So as soon as uh, if um, I am appointed, that is the first thing that I will do to update these three terms of reference for these three important projects uh, uh, which were canceled in order that the court may, be a, may approve this, uh, the revival of these projects. And uh, once these are approved, um, we can already put uh, this uh, information, communication, technology uh, in place and it will gain its momentum with the court's approval. It may take uh, uh, years to be able to complete them, but at least uh, if the court is able to appro approve the work plan, the timeline, and the resources needed for these three projects, then uh, um, this will, these projects will, will continue even after um, I have already retired from the service. Okay, uh, yan po ang uh, public interview kay uh, Justice uh, De Castro. Mga kaibigan, pansamantala po tayong magpapaalam muna para magbigay daan sa loto. Magbabalik po ang uh, PTV Special Coverage, selecting the next Chief Justice. We have already started uh, working on several projects. Not only training of um, uh, judges, justices, and court personnel to become gender responsive and, uh, and sensitive, but also, most importantly, our work in the organization of the regular family courts. As you all know, regular family courts were created in 1997. But from 1997 up to the time that uh, I, I was appointed chair of the Committee on Family Courts and Juvenile Concern, there no family court was ever organized. And so what the Supreme Court had to do was to, to designate regional trial courts as family courts. And because of that, uh, we took away from, from uh, the exercise of ju general jurisdiction over cases, uh, many family courts, I uh, many regional trial courts, there are about 120 of them. But uh, through our efforts, I'm referring to the efforts of the committee, we were able to submit a plan to the court and bank, which the court and bank approved, and that is the organization of family courts in four tranches. Uh, because I believe that the government cannot fund the organization of family courts nationwide. So I said we need to prioritize. Let's choose um, judicial regions where there are, several, uh, there are so many family cases uh, uh, pending and um, put them in the first tranche, then the others in the second tranche, third tranche, and fourth tranche. So we were able to to secure approval of the court and bank, including the identification of the regions where these family courts will, will be organized. And, um, and finally, we were able to convince DVM and Congress to provide funds for these four tranches. So we have the first tranche in 2016 uh, funded and I believe the Judicial and Bar Council has already screened the, the, these 48 fam, new family court uh, judges and, uh, and they were appointed already and the, nomine, the nominees were appointed by the president. We have 50 more funded for 2017, so we have funds for that already. So the, the screening of these family court judges uh, is ready now. Um, and for 2018, we have uh, 39 more uh, regular family courts uh, slated for funding. And in 2019, um, 50 more uh, family courts to be organized. So um, uh, we have done this uh, 
uh, this uh, um, proposal to, organ to formally organize reg the re regular family courts. And uh, the momentum is already there. I don't think BBM will still back out because they already approved the first two. So for sure, the third and the fourth will also be approved. So even if I retire already, the, uh, this uh, family courts will be surely organized and funded by, by the DBM. We are, I've also worked on many other things like um, the amendment of the rules on the involving uh, children in conflict with the law and uh, my my committee's recommendation for for reforms in the uh, in the um, rules uh, pertaining to uh, children in conflict with the law have, have already been approved and we're working right now on some more uh, amendment to the rules uh, tomorrow until saturday we are having a right shop to be able to finalize some more of these rules and i hope to be able to uh, after the right shop, I hope to be able to submit this to the court and bank for approval in the next weeks, uh, two or three weeks, uh, uh, again before I retire. We are also uh, I mean, uh, in the right shop. We are also working on the the uh, review of the examination of child witness. So, so by Saturday, I hope we will be able to complete that. And, um, and one important thing that I'd like to do before I retire is to reorganize the Ethics and Ethical Standards Committee of the Supreme Court. During the, this, this Ethics and Ethical Standard Committee is included in the internal rules of the Supreme Court. And during the time of Chief Justice Corona, I was the working vice chair of that ethics and ethic, ethics and ethical standards committee, uh, Justice uh, Mendoza was one of the members of that committee. But but after Chief Justice Corona, that um, that committee was never organized again. So I'd like to do that. The first thing that I want that I want to do is uh, to organize that ethics and ethical standards committee, because that is the only way by which complaints against justices of the Supreme Court can be brought to the court okay. for action. So I think that's uh, that is a significant uh, act that I would like to do right away. Thank you, Justice De Castro. You actually answered another question I meant to ask, which one you would prioritize. Uh, but nonetheless, I already have a red light with the permission of uh, our chairman. May I proceed with just a few follow-up questions on the, the, uh, K, um, the projects that you intend to pursue as soon as uh, should you be nominated and appointed as Chief Justice. Now, let me take the, the first uh, case that you, or rather the first uh, project that you would want to pursue, the judiciary case management system. Um, Truth to tell, even the JBC has difficult time getting the data as to how many courts there really are, and I, I think this would be helpful. However, uh, to follow through with just having the data of how many uh, courts there are, and specifically how many cases are pending with these courts, what system of monitoring and analyzing the data would you employ given the six weeks that you would be in office? Oh, uh, Your Honor, I have to admit that uh, this will be done by the consultants that we hope to we hope to uh, hire. The terms of reference for the hiring of these uh, consultants are already in place, and uh, uh, that is the th that will be one of the things that uh, will be submitted to the consultants for consideration. I understand that uh, periodically judges are required to submit reports of their pending yes. cases, but so more often than not, um, nothing is done with the information that gets mm -hmm. to, to the office. Mm -hmm. So we hope that that will be pursued. Your yes. second committee was on gender responsiveness and um, 
uh, matters that would involve the family court. When we opened the 48 family courts uh, two years ago, um, one of the common complaints of those who were uh, eventually appointed to the office was that they did not have existing courtrooms. So how do you propose what would be a better way of addressing the issue of uh, non-existing courts and then, but we are uh, constrained by law to, to open those courts since the, uh, the Supreme Court has already given the go signal mm -hmm. and that funding has been made available. So what do we do with courts that have yet to be organized and yet they do not have existing facilities, much less personnel? Mm -hmm. uh, Your Honor, the funding provided for the organization of the family court included not only the salary of the judge, the personnel, of uh, each uh, branch, as well as the uh, funds needed for the uh, for the uh, courtroom and other facilities, uh, it's part of the package. So it's just a matter of uh, finding the place. Uh, in the meantime, since it will take time to construct uh, um, courts, uh, building court buildings. Uh, in the meantime, we can um, you, uh, rent or lease. Uh, uh, the uh, buildings for, for to, be, to provide courtroom for our family court. There is already fund. We have funds for that already. It's just a matter of uh, finding the place and uh, putting up the facilities for the. May we know if the Supreme Court has also been addressing the query on many of uh, the, our judges who find it very difficult to have their courts uh, function immediately since it takes a while before their personnel are actually um, mm -hmm. appointed, notwithstanding the, um, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there have already been recommendations mm -hmm. no, for them to, to fill these positions, mm -hmm. but it takes sometimes six mm -hmm. months or even longer mm -hmm. uh, for the personnel to be appointed. What uh, oh, do you think yes. can be done in oh, this regard? We, we can look at the process, but uh, we have already, the court has already delegated to the three senior uh, justices, the chairpersons of the, the divisions, the appointment of uh, uh, court personnel, uh, except those uh, having the salary grade of 29 and above. So, it, for 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 personnel employees below salary grade 29 this can be uh, done the appointment can be done by the three senior justices so uh, but i think we really need to look into how the process why it is taking a lot of time and uh, my final question um this would most likely benefit you, um, and I am adopting a question from the Supreme Court's appointments watch uh, that they suggested. What is your opinion on applying the seniority rule in the appointment of a Chief Justice on the one hand, and also with respect to having a stable uh, transfer of leadership so that, you know, um, things after the impeachment will go back to normal if in a short term you know, in the applying the uh, seniority rule, you will only be occupying the position mm -hmm. for about six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Your Honor, um, I believe that it will not pose any problem because I've been working with my colleagues since 2007. Um, uh, the, from, from 2007 and um, especially from 2010, I have chaired the, I, was the I, I have been working, the working chair of the first division. Uh, so for a period of eight years, I've worked with them. Um, and uh, they've always supported my, my, my recommendations, uh, not only in cases, uh, judicial cases, but also on administrative matters that I bring up to the court. and. Uh, I see no reason why I will not get their support and cooperation. So uh, I, I, I expect, I'm very optimistic that uh, whatever proposal I may make uh, within this uh, short period of time, uh, I will still get the support of my colleagues. They have been very supportive for many, many years already. Thank you, Justice Castro, and with that, uh, good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Senator Gordon. All right.
kanina si Lucas Bersamin ang tinanong natin ngayon. Ito naman, ilaw rin ito. Justice ilaw. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Gordon, for such enlightenment. <laughs> I should have been <laughs> an ex-future justice. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Gordon, uh, the next president of uh, the Rotary Club of uh, Ulonga Pool. <laughs> huh? IUP alumni. Congratulations. Anyway, uh, good morning, Justice uh, De Castro. Good morning, Your Honor. Mm. Uh, could you tell us more about the business of your husband, E. De Castro Realties Business? Uh, he is partly retired. We have some houses for lease. For, uh, so we're, he's collecting rental from for from houses that we are leasing out. You indicated in your uh, PDS that uh, your husband is entrepreneur. Yes, that's uh, that's his business, leasing out uh, real properties. That's uh, his business. Mm. And uh, your sal and both. Uh, indicates the, the total amount of 19,776,000. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have here certification from the government agency concerned that there are several other real properties in the names of Tercita de Castro. Teresita L. De Castro and Teresita De Castro. Mm -hmm. Namely, four real properties in Manila. No, I do not have any property in Manila. About five properties in Calamba, Laguna. No, I don't have any property in Calamba, Laguna. Two I've properties. never been there. <laughs> in Calamba, in Pansol? No, hmm. I, I... Maybe that's another person. It's not me. So many properties listed, uh, about two properties in Baguio. No, I do not have any property in Baguio. All right, thank you. At, uh, All the properties I have are in, in Paranaque. I have one in the Katarungan, Pamba, Katarungan Village, and that's all. What is the Katarungan? No, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a housing project of the Department of Justice when I was employed in the Department of Justice. So that's all the real properties that I have. Oh, I disclose everything in my cell in. Uh, that, uh, you said that uh, when appointed as a Chief Justice, you're going to, again, uh, organize this ethics yes, sure committee. Yes, Why? Sure. Uh, are there uh, something wrong with justices? About their ethics, ethical or ethic uh, etiquettes? Uh, my, uh, Your Honor, uh, what I can say is that uh, it was uh, created in the internal rules of the Supreme Court. So we have that there. And for a time, just during the time of uh, Chief Justice Corona, I was designated as working vice chair of that committee. And as I mentioned, Justice uh, Mendoza was. Uh, also a member of uh, that committee and also and the others were Jose Pe Justice Jose Perez and uh, uh, Justice Robert Abad and our consultant was was Justice Jose B. Tug. So um, it is an existing committee which has not been organized and uh, we do not know if uh, there will be Why? Cases. Why was it not organized? I do not know. It was. I do not know why the the Chief Justice who succeeded uh, just Chief Justice Corona did not uh, organize that. I have no idea. Are we presumptuous that uh, associate justices live in accordance with ethics? Uh, well, it's not only 
we, we I cannot uh, I cannot say for sure, um, but there must be a grievance machinery. People should uh, should have that grievance machine, machinery within the Supreme within Court. Within the Supreme Court, and uh, we can discipline our own. Just like in Congress, they have their they can discipline their their co colleagues. So I think the Supreme Court should also be able to do that. Giving emphasis to ethics, etiquette. Et yes, Your Honor. Right, uh, we go to another point, please. Thank you. But, uh, do you think it will be a wise and sound management decision to appoint an applicant uh, with only two months of remaining service? You're going to retire uh, on October 10? Uh, Your Honor, as I said, it is not as if I'm going to start today working on, on projects that will benefit the court. I've been doing this since 2009. And uh, I have accomplished much already, and there are projects which are set for completion within this, within this two short uh, period that uh, you mentioned. And uh, I can initi start uh, projects um, which, which may, may go beyond my, my retirement, but I believe that once the court approved the work plan, the time frame and the budget for, for projects that I'm going to propose that will go beyond my, my term, then these projects can, can continue um, even beyond my retirement because of uh, the, the approval uh, done by the, the court and bank. Do you have a judicial temperament? Uh, I think so, Your Honor. <laughs> talking about temper? As, Are you talking about temper? Mod modesty temper. aside, I think so, Your Honor. I've never been uh, accused of uh, um, uh, not being, not having that judicial ter temperament that you mentioned. But according to my records, that. Uh, he had been admonished once in 2002. That was, uh, Your Honor, that was a long time ago. It was during the, the trial of uh, the former president for plunder at the Sandigan Bayan. And uh, the lawyers were becoming unruly. Everyone were talking all at the same time. And the lawyers did not want to, to uh, obey the court to stop talking at all at the same time and uh, we I had to ask uh, one of the lawyers to leave the courtroom and that that was all that I did and uh, according the Supre to the Supreme Court I should have first declared in contempt the that lawyer that's all that was and that was the only time it never happened again mm. and for for many years that I I am in the judiciary for 20 years now I have not been accused or complained of for, for lack of judicial temperament. I have harmonious working relationship with my colleague. I have harmonious working relationship with the employees and officials of the court. You had a harmonious relationship with your then Chief Justice? Then? Now attorney in the practice of law? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, Your Honor. All that, uh, I may have raised objections to some of her official actions, but it was done through proper procedure, and it never affected our personal relationship. Uh, in fact, uh, she, she was the one who appointed me chair of the committee on family court and uh, family court and uh, juvenile concerns. She was the one who appointed me to that committee. And uh, she was, and I worked as her working chair mm. since 2012. I was her working chair in the division, in the first division, and she never complained against me. She, we. We were able to work harmoniously. Mm. But, uh, Whatever is um, um, 
bruted about uh, outside of the court is not uh, is not true or it's not accurate you were named as ampalaya by some netizens oh, when I... you testified against the former chief justice would you care to respond to do them now no i won't care to respond to that because the people who you, who would give those comments do not know anything they have not dealt with me at all they have not uh, heard me uh, or they have not spoken with me there i think uh, they do that because of lack of knowledge and so i forgive them because they do not know what they are doing and they do not know the real person that i am and it's useless it's useless to to address that but i will be i will be uh, I will be concerned if it is one of my colleagues who will say that, or if one of the employee or official of the court who will say that. But if this come from netizens who do not know me at all, why should I give them or pay them any attention? They must have been acting on wrong information uh, fed, fed to them. So I'll follow the, the prayer that God forgive them for they know not what they do or say. Uh, in relation to the impeachment proceedings uh, at uh, Congress, when uh, we were a privy to that by, with uh, Justice uh, Mendoza, you stated that uh, even in the news, napakalaking kasalanan ng JBC and ascribing graft and corrupt practices on the part of the JBC. These are some of your statements against the JBC in the impeachment proceedings before the House Committee on Justice. After some investigation, do you still believe so? Your Honor, I just want to correct the statement that I accused the JBC of graft and corruption. I did not say that. I said, um, that we should look into what happened to the failure to submit Sal N of one of the nominees to the position of Chief Justice. I never made a categorical statement. I will never do that because I do not have hard evidence to be able to accuse the JBC of any wrongdoing. All that I said is, let's look into this. And I'm not pinpointing to anybody in the JBC who has done any wrong. Um, I, I just expressed my surprise that uh, one of us uh, did not submit uh, her sal in. Uh, from what I know, it should be a 10 year sal in. So I never made that accusation. I was very careful with the, my language when I testified in the, the house. Thank you. My time is up. And good luck, Justice. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge Hilo. Now we'll have the Honorable Justice Mendoza. Okay. Uh, the questions I intended to ask were already covered by her previous answers. So I have no further questions except that uh, I know uh, the candidate personally, and she is very competent as a jurist as a leader, and as an administrator. That's all. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Mendoza. I share the sentiments uh, or the observation of Justice uh, Mendoza. Uh, the uh, applicant is known to me for a long time. Always a scholar in the University of the Philippines and uh, a person of impeccable credentials so far as I'm concerned. UP. Huh? UP. Yes, UP. And I'm going to ask a question <laughs> with respect to UP. Because not everybody somebody, uh, can be president <laughs> or justice of the Supreme Court. <laughs> uh, let me just say that uh, the requirement, kailangan ho natin sa justice of the Supreme Court, na dapat tingnan lang natin ay yung kakayahan, yung integrity, yung kakayahan, yung talino, yung kanyang record. And uh, to a certain extent, I share na, in a, in a very noisy world, 
and this is something that will affect freedom of speech. Maraming mag-Twitter, maraming mag-Facebook. Uh, uh, kung magkamisan ay eh, pag pinakinggan nyo yan, ay eh, talagang ma-aanihinch tayo. Ma may inis o susuya o misan outright kasi nung halinga na ilalagay kung magkamisan. Pero that is why to me, uh, it's important that we have that because it is venting. Twitter is an opportunity to vent. Uh, Facebook is an opportunity to vent for many people. It's also an opportunity to say information and provided the information is accurate, we should follow it and uh, look into it. Uh, do you have any problem with the, the new revolution in our time, the information age? Uh, you know, Twitter, everybody tweeting, everybody, you know, even President Trump is uh, tweeting all the time and uh, costing him a lot of polit political uh, capital. Uh, what is your view on that? Uh, your Honor, I do not have any Facebook or Twitter account. <laughs> You're like my wife. She doesn't want to do that anymore. Yes, she told sure. me last night. I have no more problems. I sleep better because I, I'm not disturbed by Facebook anymore <laughs> and Twitter. But uh, do you think that uh, falls within the purview of free speech? Of course it does, right? Of, uh, For so long as there are limitations? There should be limitations as yes. to what they, they can say or print. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, Jan was talking about Sal N. I have information on good authority that I come from the University of the Philippines, and a lot of professors don't want to teach in UP for one reason. They don't want to show, they don't want to make a sal in. <laughs> because suddenly they could be appointed, and if they taught and they put in a sal in, and that's, as you say, it could be, it could be a bar to their appointment in the future. Uh, what do you think of that? Uh, Do you if, think that the University of the Philippines should have silence, teachers, professors? If, if uh, they have nothing to hide, why will they be scared of uh, filing their salin? Uh, well, I think it can go, it's a stretch sometimes. A salin can discourage good people from entering the judiciary. A salin can buy a lot of trouble for some because not all of us uh, do it well. For example, you were asked a while ago about your properties in Kalamba, and uh, he said you were never, you've never been there. Uh, to my mind, uh, it's important that people look into that. I only ask these questions because we are not going to have, and I'm going to advocate at this point, and this is not the, uh, uh, this is not the uh, venue for this, but I will uh, violate it. Sometimes we really have to be careful about the world today. There's little analysis going on. Since CNN started coming over and instant news is there, uh, decisions are made on the fly without benefit of analysis. And that's the difference within a court, isn't it? The Supreme Court or any judge has to do analysis of the facts and analysis of the law and render a decision. In the world today, it is so fast that most of the time, sometimes we, are, we tend to make the wrong decision. And I merely pointed out the fact of UP because that's a pragmatic concern. Now, for example, let me just, uh, in the short time that you will be there, and I agree with you that you've been doing your job in the Supreme Court. How long have you been in the Supreme Court? Uh, since 2007, right? Ten, yes, 10 years and uh, six months, seven months. 10 years and six months. That's an awful lot of experience. So that when you take over the job of the Supreme Court, you're not going to do it with, the, with the hesitation, isn't it? Chief Justice, if you're going to be Chief Justice, you're not going to do it with any hesitation, but rather you would know right away what to do because you've been there for the last 10 years. Isn't that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And when you talk about ethics uh, in the Supreme Court, uh, perhaps etiquette sometimes should be required because etiquette is the way upon which you treat others in the proper context of what is acceptable uh, behavior. But ethics is more important. Ethics is the inner value, the moral value. And you and I will probably, and people here will agree that in the case of ethics, a lot of people fall short. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes, Your Honor. And that is why you want to pursue that? Uh, yes, because I don't, uh, nobody's perfect. Is that because there are cases that have come to your attention where judges in the, are in the pockets of politicians? Or judges are given support by local government officials? And if they don't give support, uh, 
judges are left out in the cold, although that's already violative of the law now. I understand that you cannot give. But still, allowances are given, travel is being given, paper is being given, documents is being, uh, you know, uh, uh, is that what you're referring to? Oh, no, yes, that can be one aspect of it. But I think this committee is important because it will also give the opportunity to a member of the court to explain if there are um, misconceptions or misunderstandings. In a quick time, in a quick manner. Yes. And, and it will be internal. Yes, internal. And the, the justice can explain right away in this committee. Uh, like in the matter of co warranto for an example. Does one have to go to co warranto If there is an ethics case uh, that is presented before a justice, uh, it can be handled by the justices. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And, uh, it and will the justices be allowed? And I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be very sure because the yes. time is limited. Would the justices be allowed to expel a justice if he goes beyond the pale? Lumampas siya. Gumawa siya ng hindi maganda. Um, uh, it may it may not go to that extent, uh, Your Honor. Um, she can be it suspended. will amount to removal. Uh, it, if it means uh, if one is expelled, then he's practically removed from office. So I don't think we can do that. But of course, um, an ethics sure. case within the judiciary, Madam. Yes, I, yes, y Your Honor. The the Supreme Court can only discipline uh, lower. Yes, yes, that's yes. what I was yes, heading yes. to. So, um, with respect to justices of the court. We may take disciplinary action short of removal or expulsion. That's correct. And, uh, uh, you can suspend. Yes. And, Your Honor, if I may uh, say, uh, I may uh, say so that this will benefit not only the, the complaining party but also the justice because the justice will have a venue to explain his side. And also a standard of behavior to maintain. Yes. Diba? And, that's that's yes, the to make condition sine qua non. Yes, Umpisa pa lang, pag pumasok ka dyan, merong ethics, ito mm -hmm. dapat ang gagawin mo. Yes, Your Honor. Right. We, so we will uh, be aware of what is expected of us. Okay, that, that's what I thought you meant. Uh, uh, because only the, in the Constitution, only the uh, Congress may impeach the Justice of the Supreme Court. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Now, let me go in the case of uh, recent case because I'm, I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, comments here. And I don't want to be said that that's because we went to school together, I cannot ask you hard questions because I know you can handle it. <laughs> and even if you cannot handle it, you, I will have to ask you those questions. <laughs> uh, my point is simply this. Uh, was uh, Justice uh, Sereno expelled because of the failure to file asylum? Or uh, in your view of ethics, would she have been suspended? Or was she taken out? One, because she did something really, really wrong, or two, uh, also that the atmosphere in the Supreme Court has already been snake bit. Hindi na maganda ang atmosphere, hindi na mag work in the Supreme Court. Uh, the, the main reason is that she failed to, to meet the qualification uh -huh. uh, as uh, Chief Justice. Um, and that was the reason for the, the co warranto is based on the lack of qualification. Mm -hmm. And the lack of qualification stems from the fact that she, it's not only, she did not, well, if I, um, pardon me if I have to say this, uh, it was not, the non filing of Sal N not only once, but there were several There were times, others. There, several times that uh, the Sal N was not, based on the record that was before us. In that, it wasn't just once. Yes. It was many times. Yes, many times. Based on the records uh, with us. So that would be a continuous offense na overlooked. And if yes. you overlook it, the law is unforgiving, isn't it? Yes. Isn't that correct? Yes. And Just the, like the case that I'm handling there, if you overlook the code of the, uh, the conflict of interest, na may kapatid ka, nagbigay ka ng kontrata, hindi pwedeng patawarin ka agad, di ba? Uh, because violation yun eh. Mm -hmm. Dapat alam mo. Mm -hmm. I'm just citing that because I think mm -hmm. from the standpoint of the people outside, uh, kailangan intindihin lahat ng issues. And I'm using this as a way upon which I can reach out na dapat mm -hmm. ma-rahalan ma natin na ang mga tao ay dapat talaga matutong mag-analyze. Uh, even in the case of elections. Mm -hmm. Even in the case of the judiciary. Even in the case of uh, ethics complaints or even in the case of your family. 
that there has got to be a standard of behavior and that must be done by way of the proper process and the proper uh, way of uh, giving uh, the other side a chance to explain, especially after repeated uh, uh, continuous uh, mistakes that he's been doing. Yes. From my, also, Your Honor, from my point of view, it's not only the, simply the failure to file Sally and several times, but it was the act of misleading the, J, the JBC that her Sal in are with the, of, are with the University ah, of the Philippines. Yes, it, there was deception. Uh, that's how ah, I Iba na yan. Kasi so, failure to file a sal and could be a mistake and continuous failure to do that at uh, hindi mo maipakiusap parang may deception na, may misleading when, uh, when, scenario. When she wrote a letter to the JBC saying that her sal and are with the, the, the UP, UP College of Law. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm asking questions that I know the answer to, as a good lawyer does. <laughs> Some better too, once in a while. Uh, you know, and we have this running commentary in the JBC. Uh, you know, I always give us an opportunity to some better. Not only because the president is a bedan, but because some better is a good law school. Benedictine. They are good dicks. Benedictine. <laughs> All right. Uh, please do not think uh, otherwise. Now, finally, I just want to say, I want to say this. Marami uh, hutayong bakanting korte. In the time that you are going to be given an opportunity to become Chief Justice, if you become Chief Justice, in fact, there are 2,000, as of June 30, 663 positions for judges in the Philippines. Of this number, only 1,826 positions. 68.5% are going to be filled up. The people are going to be filled up. Just in the ceremony, when you fill up, you will be able to do it. Because when you say that, you will be able to do it. Or you will be involved in cash. We will not be able to do it. But, and 837 positions are unfilled. About 200 are pending appointment, which is already with the president. And I think the president is going to make the appointment. So, would you think that it would well be within your purview without violation separation of powers na masabi sa executive na uh, Mr. President it's time to appoint judges it's a point time to fill up positions because eventually ma-affectuhan ang tao, yun ang mas mahalaga at eventually ma-affectuhan ang administration but that's such your purview anymore your purview is ang tao, kailangan mabilis yung husgado kailangan maraming appointment what would you do? would you Go out of your way to do that? I, I, I think so, Your Honor, because uh, I think that's the, the way to approach it. But we have to do it the proper way. Uh, of course. There's a, mm -hmm. You don't go to the media and say this. No? <laughs> you, go, you go right away and say the reality yes. is, Sir, kung talagang kailangan natin kung magagawa ito, bibili so ang usgado and there will be... Uh, the people will be very grateful. Do you think that will happen? Do you, do you think when we can appoint all the West Nye and be bilis ang ating ang ating justicia? I think so, Your Honor. And uh, we can do that uh, uh, diplomatically if we approach the. the uh, and do you think? Ito pinag-iaral ko lang po. Tatatlo na ho. Tapos ang oras ko. Ito lang sa sabing ko. Kung alin ba ang pasobra tayo ng appointment? Dahil ang dami-daming backlog. Ang laki ng backlog ng cases. Nagtataka ako, 1,000, ilan yung kay Justice, uh, 1,500 ba yung kanyang inabot kay Justice? Supreme Court Justice na yan. He inherited 1,800 cases. By now, siguro halata nyo na ako, I'm using this to advocate certain positions na hindi nadi-discuss. At tinatanong ko ang mga, mga mahistadong maaaring ma-appoint kung anong position nila. Because dapat malaman ng tao yan. Kung yan ay ma-appoint, payag ba kayo, limbawa, na makagawa rin kami ng batas ng konti sa Supreme Court, sa Kongreso, na pasobrahan natin yung kailangan. Hanggang mabawasan na ng husto, at pagkatapos pag napasobrahan na, parang may term lang yung appoint, para lang linisin ang backlog ng husgado. Pwede ko ba yan? Yes, I agree with you. Um, you have good judgment, ma'am. Thank you. But then anyway, I just want to see the analysis about this. Is that possible? I'm sure there are other thoughts on this matter. Some say, or some say, 
Uh, what do you uh, mean, Your Honor, when you say uh, uh, do it in excess? Or what are you going to do in excess? Uh, I would do in excess if there is a backlog that is so huge, even if you appoint the members, the, judge, the judges to the courts, it will still take a long time. Mm -hmm. And I say, justice delayed is justice denied. The point is, kung mabilisan lang yan at makuha na yung ideal scenario sa mga judges, o pwede na kayong bumalik sa inyong tungkulin. In other words, even to the point of uh, what you call drafting lawyers to finish the backlog. Mm -hmm. yan, di ba? Yes, we do that, Your Honor. Yung mga retired judges, yes. pwede natin tawagin. Yes. Yung retired justices, pwede natin tawagin. That has been done, I think. Uh, that has been done in the past. So, hindi ba yung mga circuit criminal courts sa ating mayroon ganyan? Uh, circuit ng municipal araw? courts. Mga but, in, but not the same, the same circuit courts because, that was exist, in existence before. Yes, ma'am. Because ang gusto ko lang malaman is if, if somebody of your caliber, somebody of your academically, you're qualified, your, your term in the judiciary is quite good, not just good, but excellent. If somebody like you tells the president, magawa natin yan para matapos lahat ang daing ng tao sa katarungan, pagkatapos balik tayo sa dati na ang, ang level na kailangan natin ng husgado ay maandu na, pwede na natin bawasan. At pwede tayong mag-retain ng mga judges na retired, pwede tayong mag-retain ng mga justices na retired, para mahabo lang yung backlog. Do you think you yes, can yes. advocate that sort of thing? Y yes, Your Honor. I think that was done before already. Um, we, we asked, I wasn't born but, then, but, but, not, but not to decide cases. Not, they will not decide cases. They will just assist the judge in, well, in perhaps... Uh, that, is not my, that is not my vision. My own vision is they would have to decide the cases. Para mm -hmm. habulin. Do we get an authority? Yes, for a temporary period of time. <laughs> that will take uh, judicial imagination, judicial legislation. Yes, I think Congress should work into that. Yes, work for uh, that. But, but that's why I'm asking. I'm ready to follow your lead. Mm -hmm. I think Congress can do something about it. Yes, we intend to. But it would be good if the Supreme Court is with us. Because mm -hmm. if we don't have it, we don't have it. So... Thank you very much, Justice. It's uh, been an honor to have you here in this. Uh, Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you, Justice Castro. Yes, uh, Attorney Arichetta. The next candidate for interview, Your Honors, is Supreme Court Associate Justice Justado and Peralta. Uh, in, in the Senate, we're not allowed to applaud that. But since the next justice is God given, Justado, put it up. I've seen you before, but I never looked. I never, I've never seen you look this young. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. We will start with uh, the ladies' first rule. Uh, attorney uh, uh, Fernand Cayosa is not going to make the questions. 
Thank you, Senator Gordon. Uh, good morning, or should I say good afternoon, uh, Justice Peralta. I hope your eye is better now. I understand that you requested more time for your, uh, some of your exams because you are recovering from an eye operation. I have a laser operation on my right eye, and at the same time, a, uh, well, a operation on my cataract. But before that, I had also similar uh, operation, so my reading glass is adjusting after that operation. So I have a hard time uh, reading small letters, Your Honor. Well, but I'm all right now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Justice. Now, um, let me ask my first question. Yeah. Uh, first, among the aspirants for the position of Chief Justice, you have the most number of cases resolved over the past five years, a total of 3,895. Your average monthly output is 104.4 cases, and your percentage of cases disposed of is a high 110.59%. Now, how will you encourage your fellow members in the court to speedily resolve their pending cases, especially those who are unable to match your output? The, you know, thank you for, for, for that uh, information, ma'am. Now, firstly, I would like uh, to say that when I joined the court in uh, 2009, that was January 2009, I had the most number of cases that inherited. I had only one, I had 1,300 cases. And most of those cases uh, were submitted for decision. Therefore, I had to resolve them through extended resolutions and extended decisions. And, um, and uh, the, of course, uh, you also receive uh, cases on a yearly basis. And then we received something like uh, 600 50 cases a year. So if you add up the cases that I received and the cases that inherited, probably it will, it will end up to something like, uh, like 7,000 cases. So I, have, I probably have reduced my docket to only 300 cases. Therefore, I resolved uh, something like uh, 6,000 to 6,500 to 6,800 uh, cases for the almost 10 years that I've been in the court. Now, uh, my colleagues have their own way of resolving their cases, Your Honor. They are aware also of uh, the output that uh, we have because we are also furnished uh, outputs. And the only way probably the help that I can give is to uh, advise them that uh, uh, they should uh, they should also adopt uh, ways and means in order to reduce their dockets. That's only what I can do because I can we cannot teach them what they are supposed to do because uh, they have their own way of resolving their cases, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice. Now, uh, should you be nominated and appointed as Chief Justice, uh, you will be serving for three and a half years. And um, you stated in your essay uh, proposals that you have made. Um, you stated something as reg with regard to, on page three, on corruption to adopt, and I quote, the old principle that the Supreme Court applied before res ipsa locator. Um, where the decisions of a lower court judge clearly acted partially to a litigant to the extent of violating existing rules and jurisprudence. Even if there is no proof of corruption, the court should initiate a complaint on the ground of gross ignorance of the law, end of quote. How aggressive has the court been in initiating motu proprio requiring the judge, a judge to explain a decision rendered on grave abuse of discretion or even uh, gross ignorance of the law, and, or how aggressive should it be? I will explain first, before I answer that question, why I said that we have to apply the old principle of Rep. Salicator, probably during the time of your father. I read a lot of cases where judges were penalized applying the principle of Rep. Salicator. The problem with litigants and lawyers is that even if they sense that a judge might have been corrupted in order to favor the adverse party, they do not come to us and file a complaint. They do not execute any very verified complaint. Or even the lawyers, they do not come to us and complain about a judge who has been corrupted. Now, 
if you apply the res ipsa locutor, if the cases are brought to us, and we can sense, and we can sense that the judge uh, misapplied the law in order to favor another one, probably we can initiate the complaint no longer based on corruption, but based on gross ignorance of the law. And we have applied that, those principles in so many cases. I think, I do not want to mention one, but uh, the latest is a, an artist, a judge, somewhere here in Metro Manila, where uh, there were insinuations of corruption, but nobody can come up with, with, uh, with evidence of corruption. So what we did was to apply the principle of res obsolicator, because from the decision itself, something wrong was done to favor the other party. Thank you, Justice. I understand that now the court administrator takes note of uh, even anonymous complaints, which would initiate uh, a judicial audit. However, I understand that there are only a few audit teams. How will you uh, address this apparent lack of uh, sufficient personnel to address uh, the need to constantly monitor um, the cases of uh, lower court judges? Thank you, Your Honor. You asked, you asked, you asked, thank you for asking that question. Because I've always been in the constant communication with the court administrator. Because I myself receive information about judges who have been the, uh, committing wrongdoings were in office. And I told him that uh, the, best way, the best way to catch a judge probably is not doing properly is to conduct inventory on their cases. And we had many, they had many, uh, uh, there were many judges who were, uh, their, their dockets were inventoried. And we really found out that they were doing uh, wrongdoings now. But the problem really is there is lack of auditors or personnel to conduct the, uh, the inventory. So my suggestion, because we are limited, we have, uh, we have uh, limitations. We cannot just employ, uh, employ personnel without uh, violating existing civil service rules. Well, I think what they can do is to adopt the system that what they are doing now on contractual stenographers. Because there is a dearth of stenographers every now and then. We have, uh, we have a lack of stenographers. We have now adopted the employment of stenographers on a contractual basis. I think we can also do that in the, uh, in the OCA. Probably employ contractual employees to help the OCA in conducting inventory of cases or even conducting audit on this courts, ma'am, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice. Now, um, you have been a strong proponent of continuous trial, especially in drugs-related cases. And uh, ever since uh, the implementation, you have been actively going around the country to promote and to explain the rules on continuous trial. What is the assessment on the effectivity of continuous trial in criminal cases? Because in your essay, you propose that it be extended to civil cases. And uh, there is also a feedback that uh, the resolution of civil cases has been hampered due to uh, the concentration of the courts in uh, continuous trial of criminal cases. Well, I will, if you will allow me a long answer, because uh, in, my, in my essay, I just said that we had to continue with the continuous trial. First, ma'am, we implemented the continuous trial nationwide on September 1 of uh, 2017. And we have already validation reports from the MISO and also from the OCA. They just submitted to me the report last uh, July. And it seems that there is a considerable reduction of uh, cases in criminal, uh, in criminal uh, cases. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the reasons is uh, because of the continuous trial in criminal cases. But we are failing in drug cases. It's good that good senator is here. We are failing in drug cases because in drug cases, the law says that we have to terminate the trial of drug cases within 60 days from the filing of the information. It is humanly impossible to come up with a termination of a criminal case. When you start the counting of the period from the filing of the information, it should start after the arraignment. That's number one. We are also, we are also failing in the promulgation of decisions in so far as drug cases also because judges are required 
to promulgate the decisions within 15 days from submission, and they have a hard time. Now, uh, the, the, the idea actually, ma'am, of continuous trial is this, no? We develop the skills of judges. We never change, uh, we never change the rules. We never amended the rules. We just develop the skills of judges and also remind the judges what they are supposed to do because they are covered by different rules. Now, the, uh, the, the other thing is that in order to comply with the agreementary periods, what we usually do is that during arraignment, the judge should now, should now uh, schedule the hearing or the reception of the evidence of both the prosecution and the accused. So that, that will be the schedule that will be followed by the judge from beginning up to the end now. When it comes to drug cases, the judges cannot do that. Why? If they will schedule the trial of cases during arraignment, then it will happen that most of the cases will be scheduled within the 60 days, and there will be six or seven cases in scheduled on the same day. And they cannot hear cases more than three per day. So that's our problem in, 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 in the dangerous drug. But as I said, ma'am, all in all, if you, I be allowed to look at my records for the information also of the public, For uh, okay, for RTC, that means the first level courts compliance with the regulatory period for criminal cases cognizable by the RTC. They are supposed to uh, terminate their cases within 180 days. You may be shocked, ma'am that the regional trial court was only 1.12% uh, compliant with the 180-day period. But when we implemented the continuous trial, the compliance now is 44.48% for the regional trial court. For the first, for the family court, their compliance was only 1.83% for the 180 days. Now it is 26.53%. Of course, uh, in family courts, uh, the prior lady, uh, you cannot really comply with the 18-day period because there are many things that you should do in family courts. For METC, that means Metropolitan Trial Court, compliance was only 2.94%. After we implemented the continuous trial, it's now 54.56%. For MTCC, it was 3.20%. Now it is 53.04%. For MTC, that means the Municipal Trial Court, it used to be 2.335 percent, now it's 54.34 percent. For MCTC, it was merely 2.69 percent, 53.96 percent. The average then is that before we, have, we, have, we, have, uh, we applied the continuous trial, it was only 2.36 percent, now it is 47.82 percent. In promulgation of decisions where we are required by the Constitution, the second labor court should promulgate decision within 90 days, I will not anymore mention the individual percentages of the courts. Before, it was only 37.75%. In other words, there were only 37.75% complying with the 90-day period. Now, we have 68.56%. We will have a better improvement the next year because when we implemented the, the continuous trial on September 1, there were already cases scheduled for trial, and they can already be disturbed because lawyers have already been informed beforehand. But after one year of implementation, we expect a better improvement next year and with the cooperation of Congress to amend some laws to help us in, uh, in uh, reducing the dockets of the court. I, I hope uh, they will soon also amend some laws to help us in reducing the dockets of this court. Now, yes, ma'am, just yeah. one thing, just one thing now. I, I wrote in my essay that we can, if we can adapt continuous trial in criminal cases, why can we not adapt continuous trial in civil cases? That's why I said that uh, if it is successful, then probably in the next two or three years, we can adapt a system of continuous trial likewise in civil cases. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Judge. Just a follow-up. Uh, you mentioned that uh, 
uh, the levels and that you have seen the remarkable increase yes, in the, the compliance. But what is the target of uh, the court um, in terms of uh, compliance percentages and how do you plan to increase the uh, compliance uh, yes, ability of our courts? Yeah. As uh, we always do in the Supreme Court, that before we implement our rules, we have our own technical working group. You know? We go around and they determine why is it that they cannot comply. So when I receive this report only this month, I will seek permission from the court that we will again go around and uh, convene my, my, my the members of the technical working group and the subcommittee and then go around why we have this, uh, uh, this uh, accomplishment. Probably. I know that we can increase. But of course, there are many reasons. One is uh, we have problems on uh, on number of personnel. We have problems on the availability of prosecutors. We have problems on availability of scenographers. We have a lot of, we have a lot of problems. But we expect an improvement. I am confident that by next year we have a better we have a better result, ma'am. That I can assure, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Sen uh, sorry, so, thank you, Justice. Uh, Senator Gordon, if I may just have two more points, please. Okay, thank you. Um, let me adopt some questions uh, from the uh, proposed questions from the Supreme Court Appointments Watch. You are now uh, third in the order of seniority among the members of the Supreme Court. What is your opinion on applying the seniority rule in the appointment of a Chief Justice? When, 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 uh, when uh, we talk of seniority, that means that I am senior starting from the acting, uh, from the, uh, from the acting Chief Justice, ma'am. Yes, sir. But insofar as applicants is concerned, I'm the second. Because we are only three applicants and uh, Justice Tess is second on the ranking. So if you base the ranking on the applicants, I'm second to the, to, to the more senior one. Well, seniority really plays an important role in the choice of a chief justice. Uh, there are many things that a justice should learn. Many things. I came from the, uh, from the regional tri-court and then from the San Diego, I was a, a fiscal. I thought that I know already the job of a justice. But it's not. You have to learn from experience. No? I cannot say that I'm already the best or I know already the, the work of a chief justice. I have still to learn some. So seniority plays an important role. But uh, seniority sometimes may not be the number one factor. There are still many factors to consider. So that is my, my opinion, ma'am. Thank you, Justice. And my final question. Um, you submitted uh, your cell ends for the past 10 years, and let me just state that um, uh, we noted increases starting 2012, um, significant, that is. Uh, from 2012 to 2013, um, it was an increase of 3 million. From 2013 to 2014, an increase of another 3 million. From 2014 to 2015, I'm speaking in terms of net worth, okay? Um, from 2014 to 2015, it's up by 4 million. From 2015 to 2016, it's up another 4 million. And finally, from 2016 to 2017, it's um, another 5 million. Uh, could you inform uh, the council? Yeah, perhaps you can enlighten us on Yes, ma'am. Thank you that you asked that question. <laughs> my, my sal end is a joint uh, filing bit of my wife. It's a joint filing, actually. Now, uh, the sources of income reflected there, and the income of my wife will show, will justify the increase of the sal end, ma'am. Now, in 2012, I think in 2012, that was the, there was a last, a last increase of our salary based because of the law on, the, I think, RA 9227, the, uh, what they call this, the uh, SADS law. Because there was an advance of salary from 2007, I mean, there were, there were allowances that we received 2007 to 2010 based on the SAL and law. And they became part of our, of, our, uh, of our salary. Then we came up with a resolution in 2012 that even if we have already increased the salaries and then the incorporate the sal and allowance into our basic pay, we ruled 
that we have to continue receiving our allowance under our salt and law. Number two, ma'am, is that in 2011, I became part of the, I became a member of the House of Representative Electoral Tribunal. And I think it is reflected there the compensation that I received. The compensation that I received yearly, I think, is 1.7 million. And you add that to the salary that I received from the Supreme Court and the allowance that I get from the PET, and including those uh, honoraria that I received from my lectures, either, either spearheaded by the Philippine Judicial Academy and other institutions, then you have, you have, you get a increase of the sal end. Now, in 2014, I was the chairman of the bar examination, uh, examin uh, bar examinations. No? I do not know how much I received, but I can recall it could have been more than, uh, more than 1.7 million, no? And uh, continuously receiving sal allowances from the age rate, the same amount that I received in 2012, and also uh, the allowances that I received from my pet, include that, my basic pay from the Supreme Court, and my allowances, including the, <laughs> including the salary allowances of my wife, I think that will explain why there was an increase of 3 million. Also in, 20, uh, in 2017, it, it, was a, it was a gift from God, a bonus from God, which I did not know that uh, I was already entitled to a lump sum, uh, lump sum pension from the SSS because when I first worked, when I, was, when I was 20 years old, I worked in a private company and I was a member of the SSS. And when I became a lawyer in 2001, I was still connected with a private company. I, in 1982, I started teaching in the University of Santo Tomas, again, member of the SSS. Then when I joined the faculty of the Ateneo College of Law in 2005, I again received SSS. So when I reached the age of 65, I was wondering what happened to my contribution in the SSS. So it so happened that I met my good friend, uh, the former chairman, the Dean Amadio Valdez, and I asked him, am I entitled to a lump sum? And he said, of course, yes, you are supposed to be entitled to a lump sum be, uh, uh, when you reach the age of 60 and you have already paid 120 monthly contributions. So why should you not apply? The reason why I received a, an amount almost 1 million in, the jury in November of 2017, which has included as an additional income, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you that you asked that question, ma'am. Okay, thank yeah. you, Justice Elsa. He mentioned that was my last question. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Luck. Thank you also, ma'am. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Thank you, uh, Attorney Cayosa. We shall now hear from uh, Judge Hilo. Uh, thank you, Senator Gordon. Uh, it's already good afternoon, Justice uh, Just Dado Madarang Peralta. Good afternoon, uh, also, Your Honor. When I was in a private practice uh, in the 70s, there was a city court judge uh, by the name of Madarang in C Manila. That's, uh, that's my uncle, you know, that's, the brother, that's the brother of my mother, Rufino Madarang. Okay. Yeah. I had a lot of relatives, your honors. <laughs> <laughs> you were 39 years old uh, when you had your first child. Why did you start late? Yeah, okay. I hope Justice Caliaso, Le Caliaho is listening, Your Honor. I will answer it this way, you know. And this is a true story. I was married to my job. I never thought that I would get, I would get married. Where's Justice Because Perez? Because Justice Caliaho did not allow me to take a rest when I was his prosecutor. When I, when I was his prosecutor from uh, 1988 up to nine, 1994, he never allowed me to have a rest except lunch time. And we had to hold trial from 8.30 to 12 o'clock, and then 2 o'clock to 4.30 in the afternoon. And the only time that we have a recess is during lunch time. But it was providential, Your Honor, that when I was already 37 years old, or almost 36 years old, for the first time, he told me, and he asked me, Fiscal, can we have a break? Then I told him, granted, Your Honor. So. I, and so I went out of the courtroom, I went around the courtroom, and I met a solicitor, assistant solicitor general in, the, in one of the courtrooms where they usually start their trial at 10 o'clock. There's where I met my wife, Your Honor. And so I got married late, 
I was about six days short of becoming 37 years old. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the first pregnancy of my wife was a blighted ovum. So I thought that we, do not have, we, do not, we will not bear any more children, but uh, God's will, or well, true prayers, Your Honor, we had four children now. The first pregnancy was a girl, the, two, the second pregnancy, twins. And then I have a young boy who's only 15 years old. <laughs> but no regrets, Your Honor, no regrets. No one year old boy? 14 year old, yes. Ah, 14, 14, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 40, 15 year old. They have a defect in hearing. At any rate, you attended the study tour on court automation in Washington, D.C. and uh, Virginia. Have you implemented any project for court automation yeah. after that? Yes, yeah. that's a good question, Your Honor. Now, uh, the seminar that we attended was a seminar for judges, I think, and also justices, no? But at that time, when we were when we attended that seminar, there was no yet automation to speak up. We were being prepared to, to attend. No, not, not fully automated. May I ask, Your Honor, what year was that? Because there are many travels that I had in Washington, D.C. Yeah, during the time that you had traveled, no, no. It does not ah, indicated yeah, yeah. on record. Yeah, yeah, yes, Your Honor. So, if that was the time that we were in Sandigan Bayan, I think it was Sandigan Bayan that first introduced automation to the information of everybody. Your Honor. We had the first, uh, at, we had the first uh, automated, I think, in, we introduced it in Sandigan Bayan during the term of Justice Test de Castro. So we were, you know, we were required to attend that seminar. Automation really helped, Your Honor, because that will, you know, that will uh, uh, replace the manual taking, of the, taking down of notes by taking down the testimony of witnesses through the computer. If you want a correction, you can, I mean, if you want to uh, know what is the uh, statement of the witness, you just, uh, you just uh, rely on what is printed or what is taken by the computer. That will really expedite uh, termination of cases, Your Honor. News uh, reports say that uh, you are close to Justice uh, Lucas uh, Bersamin. In fact, uh, there are several photos of you together in different uh, social media. How does it feel going against the top post with your close friend as an applicant uh, for the position of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? That, that's a good uh, question, Your Honor, but I will start answering the question when, uh, during our RTC days in Quezon City. What happened is that I was unknown to Justice Bersamin, but he was older by three years, I think, by me, and he was, uh, his station was Branch 96, and my station was Branch 95. So the rooms were beside each other. And it's my, you know, it's my, because of the, uh, because of uh, what I experienced from Judge Caldejo, so I applied for the experience. So I do not go out from my courtroom. Justice Bersamin also does not go out from his courtroom. So we always take lunch together. And there were humors, they would say, Sino ba sa kanila sa dalawa? That is started the friendship. But you know, Your Honor, when we meet on lunch time, we do not, we discuss jurisprudence. Huh? because he's an expert in procedure, and he considers me also good in criminal procedure and criminal law, and we make exchanges. Now, about uh, competition with, with two friends, I recall, I recall, when I applied for the position of Sandigan Bayan, and Justice uh, Bersamin applied for the court appeals, a question was asked by the former Chief Justice. Are you not competing with each other? He said, no, you, no, sir, because he's applying for the court appeals. I'm applying for the Sandringan Bayan now. We have many things in common, actually, because uh, during our time as RTC judges, he was uh, chosen, no? I'm, I hope I'm not selling him, but he was chosen as, as an astounding judge for best decision in writing in 2000, both in criminal law and civil law. So they were saying, oh, talo ka nung friend mo. I said, because oh, he's better than I, so why should I envy him? And you know what happened the next year? I was chosen as most outstanding, one of the outstanding judges during the 100th year celebration of the Supreme Court. And the next year, we were both outstanding judges, judges in the judicial 
excellence. I was appointed, uh, I think, in the year uh, 2002 to the Sandigan Bayan. He was also appointed to the Court of Appeal in the same year. I was appointed in the Supreme Court, January of 2009. He was appointed April of 2009 as a Justice of the Supreme Court. Now, now that there is a vacancy of justice, we are here again. Whoever we appointed, Your Honor, we have to respect. I, I, I see him as a competent and uh, ready to assume the position of the Chief Justice. I hope that is the same way he feels about me. <laughs> so that's my, that's my answer, Your Honor. And uh, why should you be chosen over uh, your colleagues, uh, Justice? How, how is that, Your Honor? How, well, why should you be chosen over your colleagues? Uh, we have this uh, associate but, justices, uh, Teresita de Castro, Justice your, Bersamin. Oh, yeah, I, I will. How about uh, Andres? Reyes Jr. I can I cannot talk about uh, I cannot speak about Justice Andy Reyes because he has only been with the Supreme Court for less than a year. But I can talk about Justice Tess de Castro and Justice Bersamin. I know him since we became since we were judges in 1994 up to the present. I have known Tess de Castro, Justice Tess de Castro, since uh, 2002. For a time, she was my presiding justice. And in fact, when she left the Sandigan Bayan as presiding justice, I was the one who replaced her. So I know her work ethics. I know their work ethics. Both of them are capable and competent to lead the Supreme Court, Your Honor. Uh, you started and ended your uh, ponencia in the case of uh, Ocampo versus Enriquez with respect to the bureau of uh, the late President Marcos. And, uh, with the need for closure and moving on. Considering the events that uh, transpired after that decision was promulgated, do you think uh, the Filipinos found closure and the wounded families of the dead and injured by martial law were able to move on? I, 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 hope, I hope that issue has really been buried, Your Honor, because if we do not bury that issue, then uh, we cannot move on. And I still believe that uh, whatever is the past, we have to move on. We will not improve as a nation, Your Honor, if we do, if we do that. That's why I said, I, I put that as the last, uh, last part of my ponencia as a reminder to those who will read my decision that there is a need to move on. We cannot, we cannot live on the, in the past, Your Honor, on the past. We have to move on. And I think we are moving on. I think we are moving on. They are, the issues now are not about Marcos. There are now so many issues other than the issue of burial of the late Ferdinand Marcos, Your do, Honor. Do you think uh, it brought unity to the country? I, I think so. In I what think so. way? Well, we do not anymore, uh, we don't anymore receive or hear about uh, complaints about the burial of uh, of uh, the late President uh, Marcos, we are now uh, focused on the issues confronting the nation. Unlike before, Your Honor, before his uh, burial, I, I, I believe there were so many issues unresolved during those times. Areta, you... Am I correct to say that uh, you bird the... Uh, your frustrations when your wife, Justice uh, <laughs> Fernanda, has not considered for the presiding justice of the Court of Appeals. It was not actually a frustration, Your Honor. It was actually knowing what's the truth. Mm -hmm. That was my point. Because I do not like, I did not like uh, that uh, others will suffer what my wife suffered mm -hmm. when, when, the, when the spouse is really a member of the court. And what about those who applied, so who applied, and who have no connections? So that was my point. In fact, I do not harbor any ill feelings. Or that's my nature, even in the Supreme Court. That's why sometimes they call me as a joker, which is not correct. I'm a pacifier, and Justice Mendoza can attest to that. When the discussions become intense, they always look for me. And if I'm not around, they're not happy. So that's 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 how that's how I live. Mm. <laughs> Had, uh, I, in fact, I'm I'm starting to forgive them, Your Honor, because <laughs> I already discovered the truth. Mm. Had your wife been the presiding justice of the Court of Appeals, 
And now you're applying as a chief justice of the Supreme Court. Don't you think it's... Uh... Yeah, I will not say it this way, Your Honor. The man is always above the woman. So if he becomes the presiding justice of the Court of Appeals, I can reverse her. I can reverse. In other words, there will be no conflict. Mm. There will be no conflict, uh, Your Honor. I hope. <laughs> All right, uh, going back to your properties uh, from uh, the questions of uh, Tony Cayosa, that then you fully explain now how your income uh, increased. About uh, based on the certification from the government uh, agency concerned, it appears that uh, there are several other real properties in the names of spouses Justado M. Peralta and Fernando Peralta, and some in the name of Justado Peralta. We have this one property in Muntinlupa. Do you have a property in Muntinlupa? I have two, Your Honor. The first one was acquired in 1993. We were both working in the Department of Justice in, in Catarungan. We paid that installment for, uh, for 10 years. I was a fiscal and she was with the OSG. She so we availed of the low cost uh, housing or co low cost lots from the Katarungan that's beside, uh, that's beside uh, the National Believe The other one is uh, we bought an installment basis sometime in 2015, a piece of uh, property. It's small lot, Your Honor. It's only 200, I mean, it's only 165 square meters. These are the two lots that we have in uh, Montilopa, Your Honor. But uh, do you have also a property in Las Piñas? Uh, yeah, because, you know, I will, <laughs> you know, Your Honor, our subdivision is very unique. Our subdivision is composed of three cities. One part is Parañas, Que City. The other part is Las Piñas City. And then the other part is Montilopa City. So some of, my prop some of our properties are, are in Parañaque, where we have a house, a modest house. Uh, consists of three lots because when uh, when we be transferred because we were renting an apartment uh, before and our family was growing we looked for a house somewhere in the south and you know the house was only 2.8 million it was a it is a small house consisting of 204 square meters but there are two titles there one is 70 one is 75 square meter the other one is 180 but this is one cut then, uh, in 2001, my neighbor, who owns a vacant lot near my house, sold the property to us on installment basis. And then we, and then we, uh, we were able to pay her uh, be, uh, within two years. No? And then we, we, you know, we put up an extension, you know, a bungalow extension and a, uh, and a uh, garage. And then in 2006, because I was active in the association, a lawyer from federal land called me up. I was in Sandigan Bayan. That was, I think, 2004, within, within those years, Your Honor. Then he said, sir, we have a lot in federal land. We are not anymore advertised for sale. When who are you? He said, I said, I'm, I was your former student at the College of Law at UST. Why not buy it at 6,500 6, square meters? So I bought it. So that house now, in 2006, because the old house, it is an old house that we bought through a loan from the GSIS. It was a true loan. It was a loan from the GSIS in the amount of two million. It was already, it was already old, and there were a lot of termites. So my friend said, "Why not, why not uh, improve or renovate your house?" So we started renovating the house in 2006, and then the extensions. We made it up here that is consists of one house, but actually these were extensions that uh, we had when we bought these properties. So if you look at the house, they think that it's very big. It's only 600 is, is square meters, but consisting of three titles now. And then in, in 2012, in, in front of my lot, the, I think we, all of our lots were priced at 6,000 to 6,500 square meters. No? It was very cheap at that time in Bihapons Paranaque because we did not have water. We buy water from trucks. Now, in 2010, when water was already connected to our subdivision, the price of, uh, the price of lot went up by 12,000. So I bought a lot in front. It so happened that the owner of that house is the client of my brother-in-law. He said, Manong, you buy that 
the property now because someday that property will not be per rat, will not be more than 12,000. And now it's, I think it's now 15 to 20,000 per square meter. And then because our children are very, very young, we do not want them to, to, uh, no, to uh, enjoy a, li a life. We want, we want them to enjoy a comfortable life. And I told to my wife, we start buying properties, even on installment basis, within the subdivision. So that's why that part in Las Piñas is actually part of our subdivision. It's not far from our house. That's why we have a lot in Las Piñas, Your Honor. But that's also bought, that's also bought through installment, Your Honor. Erata, you have already denied the rumors that uh, you were announcing that you will be the next Chief Justice. <laughs> However, I still hear some of these rumors until now. Does this mean that it is true? <laughs> Modesty aside, you're right, I'm not like that. I am not like that. That's not my character. Mm -hmm. I always believe that uh, your faith belongs to God. I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, uh, go out and say I will become the Chief Justice because supposing I will not be appointed, what will be the face that I will show to my friends and you? I think uh, unlikely of me, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Justice Peralta, and uh, good luck. It's already past 12. Yes, thank, uh, thank, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Ilo. We now go to Justice Jose Mendoza. Okay. Uh, good noon, uh, Justice Peralta. Uh, I intended to ask about uh, the revival of the Res Ipsa Locator Doctrine, but it was already covered, and also the adoption of the continuous trial rule on civil cases, already covered. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you have a reputation of being a joker. Uh, can you expand on that? This is what I, this is what my friends uh, told me, that they, there are some rumors or reports appearing in social media that I'm a joker. And I take that, uh, that statement that as if, as if I have done nothing in the Supreme Court, then that I'm a joker. And that I have not, uh, I'm not uh, supposed to be a chief justice because I can do the chief justice because I'm a joker. What I know of a joker, Your Honor, is, is he's not a doer. He, has, uh, he, he only jokes for the purpose of jokes, and he does not do anything. I think that's not me. As I said a while ago, Your Honor, I'm proud to say, more is that side. Not, I think you were there in 2017, we were in Baguio, when we had our session in Baguio, and I was surprised when the former Chief Justice said, announced, that after all pala, Justice Dado is the top performer all these years. I think you remember that. That is not a joker, I think. That's not a joker. In 2010, in 2010, Your Honor, in 2009 to 2010, I had the privilege of sitting as member of the Rules Committee that drafted the rules on uh, procedure, special procedure, environmental law. During the time of Chief Justice uh, Corona, he also tasked me to become a member of the committee that drafted the rules on uh, special rules on intellectual property cases. In 2014, I was the chairman of the Board Examinations Committee and the end bank tasked me to lead or to head the committee that drafted the rules pertaining to Sharia bar exams. This was approved by the end bank. In 2015, uh, Chief Justice Sereno appointed me and tasked me to head, to chair the committee that drafted the rules on revised rules on small claims. And then after that, in 2016, he appointed me as the chairman of the committee that drafted the rules on the continuous trial guidelines and uh, guidelines on uh, continuous trial in criminal cases. Aside from those, Your Honor, the records will bear me out. Probably all these years that I joined the court, I never stopped. I never stop uh, accepting the request of the Philippine Judicial Academy to one of the regular uh, lecturers. Now, if they say that I'm a joker with all those things that I have done while I'm in the court, do you think I'm a joker? What I can only say probably is that I have a good sense of humor. 
before when the discussion becomes intense, I always say, I will always make it a point that uh, everybody, everybody should forget whatever, whatever transpired during our heated or intense, uh, intense deliberations. I think I should, I should be, uh, I should be uh, called a, uh, a one with, uh, with a sense of humor, Your Honor. Not a joker. And then uh, earlier you also said you're a forgiving man and you have forgiven them after learning the facts. Can you expand also on that? Well, Your Honor, <laughs> well, one of the retired members of the JBC came to me one time, not too long ago, he came to me, and I told him frankly, if you ask yourself what you did to my what how would you feel? And I asked him. Then he started uh, talking, but I did not, we did not talk about what Iber transpired with the case, you know. I did not like to talk about that anymore. So I said, you know, you're my friend, you're again my friend. I'm like that. You can get out of my room, so I go, and then sleep well. I have forgotten everything. The other three, there were judges, Your Honor. They came to me. They said that like this, like this, and we did not do that, but, and so on. Forget it. You may now go home and then sleep well. So that's it. That's it. Those I have are... forgiven everybody, Your Honor. That's past. My, my character is that, Your Honor, you, you, forgive, you forgive those who, who might have offended you, you forgive them and move on. You cannot turn back the time, Your Honor. Useless talking about the past. That will only cause you depression. That's why they say I'm always smiling. Probably the reason also why I look young, like what uh, Senator Gordon said a while ago, Your Honor. Ganun ako eh. Wala kong kaaway. Even, the, you know that, there may be some discussions in the Supreme Court. After that, when we take our lunch, everybody laughs. Why? Justice Dado is there. Dapat ganun tayo eh. You know the truth. What for pa? If you know the truth. What for? Forget, Your Honor. Those were my only questions. You can uh, go home and sleep well. But I'm not Chetro, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Justice Mendoza. I'm, uh, again, very privileged to be able to ask questions of the good justice of my word. Uh, so many good things about. And uh, certainly, I, it appeals to me that you are in the business of managing delay. And you're, <laughs> And you're doing managing delay uh, by uh, continuous hearing of cases, something I advocated as early as 1980 when I was a mayor of Olongapo. But it would appear, how has that impacted on the backlog of cases? Oh, the Supreme Court, alone, Supreme Court alone, sir, has over 170,000 cases pending before it. Yeah. Sandigan Bayan has uh, 673, which is uh, yes. something that's uh, impressive. Yes. But how do we, how does, would managing delay by way of continuous hearing cases, I'm sure it will create an impact. Yeah. Pero yan ang makakabutid sapagkat kung pala ay, kung mapabilis, alam naman ninyo. Alam po, Your Honor, yung guidelines, I hope, can I talk in Tagalog, Your Honor, so that the public can understand. Kaya ako nagtatagalog, dahil ito ba tawag buwan ang tao. Dalawang, there are two important parts of the continuous trial. One, one is the skills development. Yes. Now, this is the, the skills uh, development uh, teach the judges how to react to motions that will cause delay. I'll give you an example, Your Honor. There are prohibited motions in criminal cases, and one, one of which now is the, the judicial determination of probable cause. So we tell the judges that when you set the arraignment, then you set also the hearing of that motion. Because if that motion is a prohibited motion, there is no need to require the fiscal to comment. And do not be afraid. You will not be administratively liable. There will be no Rule 65 to speak of. And if you do that, you immediately go to the arraignment. You do not anymore reset the arraignment because there is a joint hearing of the motion for judicial determination of arraignment. So what do we achieve? We achieve we achieve a, uh, a, speedy, a speedy arraignment because you cannot proceed with trial without proper arraignment. That's one, Your Honor. You know? How to, it's, it's actually skilled. Now, the most important one is this. 
we have to schedule the hearing of the cases during our amendment. It's like this. So if today is the arraignment, Your Honor, under the law, you have to terminate your trial within 180 days. So in that, in that arraignment, you already fix the trial dates for the trial. We divide the 180 days into two, 90 days for the prosecution, 90 days for the accused. Now, if one of the parties later on move for postponement, that postponement should not be substituted by another day. Regardless, regardless of the reasons for most postponement, do you have to finish? Those, those are the skills. So those are only one or two of the skills uh, that we taught the judges. And it's very effective. Why? We cannot do away the regulatory periods provided for by law. The law was, uh, the law was there since 1992, when our former Chief Justice was a member of the Senate, the father of the Honorable Cayusa, uh, and we adopted some of those provisions in our rules. So how can we do, you cannot do away the 180 day period. So the only way to do that is the system. Now the other one, your honor, is that we, will, we do not anymore allow written offer of exhibits. Because if you resolve objections on testimonial evidence, then the judge should immediately rule on the objections. That should be also true with the uh, offer of evidence on documentary evidence. If testimonial evidence, objections on testimonial evidence can be done orally, then it should follow, then it should follow that the uh, offer of documentary evidence should also be orally. So there will be no more delay, Your Honor. These are the things that we thought. The other one, Your Honor, is that judges should follow strictly what the rules mandate them to follow. Because I always tell the judges that you are like you belong to a religious uh, sect, that we have a Bible. If you are a Catholic, you have a Bible. If you are a Protestant, you have a Bible. We judges, we have our own Bible, which is the rules of court. If you do not follow the Bible, the rules of court, you are not a good follower. What will happen to you? You might be removed, you might be disciplined. So why, do, why should you not follow the scheduling of trial? The trial should be heard, trial should be set Monday to Thursday, morning and afternoon, and then hearing days on Fridays. Why should you why should not follow the rule on archiving and the rule on uh, on uh, and on the average inventory? Sir, 180 days thing you know, reduce ba to something appreciable? Yes, yes, your honor. Manay lang araw po. Kasi po kawawa ang tao eh, nagbabayad sa abogado, popospon bayad. Syempre, alam naman niyo 'yan, yung uh, Alam mo po, uh, I, your honor is like this eh. We have uh, adopted a system that they can no longer go out beyond the 180 day period. Ah, so, Wala nang rason eh. Nakaposa sa sila. Nakaposa sila sa 180 days. Yun lang po problema namin yung drug cases eh. May hirap po sasan yung judges ng 60 days from filing of the information po eh. Speaking about that sir, yung isang problema natin dito sa bansa eh halos hindi napaparusahan yung mga polis. O kung magkamisan yung mga polis pag nguhuli ng drugs hindi na appear nakakausap o maraming ginagawa. Uh, I have a proposal na yung police courts in every town, in every province must be identified para alam ng tao, ito yung judge na umahawak ng korte na yan, ito yung fiscal na umahawak na para makikita kung talaga umuusad yung kaso. But, yan ho ba pwede yung gawin dyan sa sinasabi yung problema sa drugs? Because, karamihan yan, drugs eh. Konting, yan ay isang dapat uh, room for legislation. Oh, yung, yeah. uh, yung gano'ng karaming judge, yung gano'ng karaming drugs, kaso na kagad, di ba? Yeah, that, so, that, that has been the problem. Even when I was a fiscal and a judge, Your Honor, eh, how to guard against uh, the, you know, the, uh, what do you call this, the uh, dissipation of those uh, drugs that yes. are actually, they do not present the actual uh, drugs confiscated. That is beyond the power of the court, Your Honor. It's, it's more administrative. Eh? It's more on the part of the of the police agencies and probably the Department of Justice or Department of Local Government. We cannot do anything because because what is offered and identified during trial, that's all. But that's, as a Chief uh, Justice, when the time comes, as your Chief Justice, what do you do about that if you see that that's a barrier that dapat ma overcome? I'm sure to the Judicial Bar Council where you have congressman and a senator, uh, maybe you can pass on some of these suggestions para 
ma-aprobar sa usgado, uh, sa, sa legislature, kung yun ang problema. But to my mind, I, I like I like your spirit about being focused on managing delay. And being focused means talagang tuloy-tuloy dapat. Pagka may nakitang bara, hahanapan na kagad ng paraan, hindi hihintayin. Tama, tama po. So, how do you propose to handle all these things, Your Honor? Actually, actually Your Honor, I was reading your 9165, or N9165. Nandun lahat yung ano eh. Nandun lahat yung uh, provisions eh. How to, how to uh, arrest or, or this, uh, or how to go about all of these shenanigans of the policemen. Walang nagpapail eh. Hindi nga ako eh. Nawawala pa evidensya o di kaya naman nag-expire. The court can only come in when the case is already filed eh. That's beyond our jurisdiction eh. You will be encroaching on the power of the executive, Your Honor eh. Nandun lahat eh. There's a provision in the in the revised penal code, Your Honor. There is only one, I remember, where policemen were convicted of the crime of qualified bribery. And that law was introduced as early as 1994, when Republic Act 7569 took effect, where the law says that if police officers or any agents, you know, and those who prosecute cases fail to file or prosecute persons arrested, where the penalty is reclusion perpetual to death, then they will be for a consideration, then they will be liable for qualified bribery and they will suffer the same penalty of the penalty to be uh, imposed to those who commit the crimes. Iisa pa lang ang nakumbikyan, Your Honor. You know, uh, is there any, again, monitoring of cases being done to pinpoint, sabay-sabay yan, eh, police, fiscal, uh, juzgado. Kung meron ganong monitoring ng mga cases. Malalaman natin kung saan. Uh, may, meron, may, I think we have monitoring, Your Honor. But, but I'm sure are, there is, pero may, hindi meron, nga ako ginagawa eh. Meron monitoring. What they can only do probably is what as we did when we were judges is that we, we sense that there's something wrong. During the time of uh, Senator Lacson, he was the general at that time, we always give him a copy of our orders that this policeman did not appear. The, the next day, Your Honor, that policeman were already assigned in Mindanao eh. They have to appear because if they, the cases are dismissed due to absence of the policemen, the office of the PNP will be served with a copy of our orders. The next time around, Your Honor, the policemen are no longer... That, that, that is one of our proposals. Na talagang pagka nililipat siyang polis, eh, babalik dapat ka agad para humarap, lalo na kung continue series of cases. But this one, Your Honor, dismissed na eh. They dismissed na. Because, of, because the, the accused now will invoke his right of a speedy trial. We cannot do anything now. So we have to dismiss. So what are we going to do? We have to look for the policemen. They should suffer the consequences. That's all that we can do. Eh. But to go beyond that, I think uh, it's already... But isn't leadership supposed to be that, whether you're in the judiciary or you are a legislator or you are uh, in the executive? You have to take it to the next level in the Puba. Okay. This is a hearing to find out who okay. are the best competent to become Chief Justice. Okay. I just want to know, if you have those problems, how would you approach it? Would you I approach the Honor, president? Would you approach uh, the legislature and have a meeting with the Senate president and the Speaker of the House? I think, I think Your Honor, what we should do is to have a summit. To, uh, a summit. Yes. Summit among prosecutors, among judges, and probably and among those who are involved in the enforcement of our drugs law. And then let, let's come to an agreement. What should be done? But I think that should just be that should be that should be done, Your Honor, because I think the laws are already there. They are not only being implemented, Your Honor. Isn't that the Sufficient perennial thing. complaint? The laws are already there, but hindi naman pinayimplement. Yeah, probably because uh, that's why I said, Your Honor, my suggestion is that uh, probably we could have a summit, and then the summit among prosecutors, judges, and uh, and also enforcers, Your Honor. In five pillars. Yeah, we have been doing that actually. We have been doing that actually. actually. Well, we, we have to do it regularly, Your Honor. Sometimes the problem is uh, who will spend for the uh, food eh? and hotel Who will spend for the food? <laughs> <laughs> I, ho I hope you're joking. <laughs> no, no, Your Honor. No, no, we, we do not have resources. Uh, it's good that we have developmental partners. I think, uh, I think even the JBC know, know that. The yeah. developmental partners like the uh, Abaroli, Asia Fondin and Gojas, they are the one helping us with all these seminars. Eh? All right, I'll go to another point. The other point that I'd like to ask you is, what is your take on the matter of, you know, there's so much gasoline expended 
in terms of uh, parang gasolina sinusunog. No? Ang dami-dami yung kinakaso na madalaking tao, yung kalang Marcos cases. Wala naman nangyari. Tumagal lang tumagal yung kaso, tapos wala nangyayari. Ito rin ang, ang bintang, either nabili yung husgado, o nabili yung piskal, o nabili... And to my mind, that is the one of the threats to our uh, judiciary, to our country, in fact. Na pagka pumalpak tayo, walang, wala talagang focus, walang uh, uh, parang uh, attitude na kailangan mabilis, kailangan flexible tayo. Yung mga ganyan, mayroon akong 5Fs kasi, yun ang sinusunod ko pag napapatakbo ko ng gobyerno o ng anumang hinahawak ako. Pero, the scorecard is very woeful. Yeah. Very woeful. Ano ang magiging I think, uh, attitude ng isang chief justice sa mga bagay na I think the, the, the uh, number one solution there, Five Your pillars Honor, again. We have to avoid delay. Delay in the, the disposition of cases, that's the solution, Your Honor. We, we are very fast and then you render fair, fair judgment. I think nobody will complain. Eh. Kasi ang, ang tatagal kasi ng kaso, I was in, I was in Sandigan Bayan for seven, eight years. Yes. When I left the Sandigan Bayan, there were still PCGG cases. Huh? As fair file as early as 1988 and 87. It's good that my presiding justice then and my chairman was test, your, uh, Justice Test de Castro. Pero it would be people like you, sir. Siguro yung mga katawad na ninyo, nasasabihin niya, closure, wala eh. Parang ang tingin ko niyan, eh, sinasabi ko rin dito sa Senado, no? Na wala tayong closure. Alam ba? Yeah, but, uh, but, with you, but if you are fast, your honor, Kaya nga minsan, eh, nagdududa na, that's why, nagdududa ang tao. Talaga, eh. talaga. Kasi masyadong matagal eh. And then when you come up with the decision, hindi na sila naniwala yung nang tama eh. But you come up with the decision as early as possible, you comply with the period, wala nang masasabi ng tao, basta your decision is fair eh. Of course. Yung delay talaga ang cost ng delay. Of course, when you're Chief Justice, I can, I can be assured, or we can all be assured that managing delay will be a priority. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. In uh, fact, I heard Honor, that from Justice Serena also last time. <laughs> In fact, Your Honor, I uh, some time ago I proposed to the N Bank that we now to, had to come up with the amendments of the rules on civil procedure. Masyado na matagal ang civil procedure. Ang suggestion ko, and then Justice Tony, our acting chapters, agreed with me. Let us make all pleadings na evidentiary na. No more, no more allegation of ultimate facts to constitute a cause of action. A statement of fact na, and then attach the attach the evidence that you want to attach, and then attach the affidavits of the witnesses in the complaint, and then the uh, and then the answering party likewise will state his defence, attach the document in support of his defence, and then attach the affidavit who will testify on that. I like that. I think you go to pre trial, Your Honor. What will the judge will do? You will even go. We will do away with the modes of discovery. Walang gumagamit ng modes of discovery. Yeah, I was about to ask you that question. Wala, modes of discovery, di ba ginagamit yan? Walang ginagamit yan. I mean, that is supposed to limit the trial yeah, uh, to, to make sure na bago kayo dumating. Ando yes, lahat, Your Honor. Di ba? That's one. Hindi na sa labas yan, pero pinapaliwanag ko lang. Kaya may amugado kayo, hingin niyo sa abogado niyo para umikli, mag-modes of discovery na kayo. Wala nang modes of discovery, Your Honor. Now, if you do that, my suggestion, if you do that, what will happen in the pre-trial is, wala nang gagawin, no more correct, issues. Eh. Correct. Uh, then we will prohibit motion to dismiss in the civil Hindi ba tayo masyadong technical sa ating rules of procedure? Because we copied the rules from correct. America. Correct. Hindi tayo practical. Yeah. In other words, it's about time that we... Revisit all these things. Na, kumisa kasi, that's also a failure of the legislature, sa amin, or for that matter, even the law centers. Yeah. Pag uh, in-address ang isang court, ang usapan, iiklian, ay eh, lumalabas, yeah. lalong kinukulit, lalong that's humahaba. Correct. That's correct, Your Honor. Nagdadagdag, nagdadagdag. That's correct. If you follow that, Your Honor, during the pre-trial, no more issues to talk about. Summary judgment. Do not go to trial anymore. Or judgment on the pleadings. Do not go to trial Kaya anymore. Kaya nga, tinatanong kayo, bilang maaaring maging Chief Justice, eh, pag, <laughs> pagka nagawa nyo yan, susunod lahat yan eh. Yeah. So, pag nagsama we, leader ng tao, sinasabi, lalabas ang galing eh. Yeah. We, I was already advised by the acting Chief Justice to come up with a, uh, a, 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 a circular to form a technical working group and a committee to start with that. But it will take time, Your Honor, because you will have also to look at intervention, third-party complaint, compulsory counterclaim, permissive counterclaim, third-party complaint, all of this. Eh. They, all of this will be affected. Uh, but we can do that. Why not? We, we must do, do it.
Yeah, we must do it. Before you go, and I just, I just will close by, by sharing a story with you. When I was mayor, I was attacked in 1980. I was fiscal, I was judge, I was police. I was like, what do you need to do to Alam niyo at ala pala ko. And I, I enjoyed that experience. Sumuli sa akin si Chief Justice Fernando. You are in the executive. You have no business tampering with the judiciary. <laughs> so yung mga attitude na ganyan, dapat talaga, we I must break those walls and make sure na, sinasabi niyo, I like the idea of a summit, have a regular summit, have a regular scorecard, and make sure that the performance of duty is paramount. Yeah, that, that, thank you. That's correct, Your Honor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you also, Your Honors. Uh, thank you. Justice Mayor, Peralta, may, sir. may problema tayo sa pagkain ang magbublot at si Justice Peralta. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Attorney Ariel Cheta. Last break, sir. Your Honours, last break. Seeking, Ingi Fernando. I'm being uh, instructed here. Uh, the session <laughs> is now uh, suspended until 2 o'clock this afternoon when we will come back. Yes, Your Honours. 2 o'clock, bagus yung 1.30. Pero di, di kaya, 1 o'clock na eh. Uh, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, one time. I uh, have an appointment, but I already uh, asked permission from uh, the chairman. Si, kaya nagpunta si Coco. We're duckling the uh, common law. Thank you, thank you very much. Session is suspended until 2 o'clock. <laughs>